What's going on, guys? We are live with the Beastly Thought Show. How's it going, Beastly Gamer? Not too nerdy. We just lost Unreal Gamer, like literally just this second. <laughs> Hopefully he'll join back in. We have a ton to talk about today. We were talking about Capcom possibly being available for sale, the Apple TV gaming console that I am predicting, the Beastly Game Tournament, which I'm going to force you guys to commit to, Last of Us discounts. Beastly Gamer is an addict to The Last of Us as well. Xbox One and PS4 exclusives. Arkham Knight possibly being released February 24th. And the Steam sale. What do you guys think? Are you excited? Well, you pretty much went over the whole show. Have a great yeah. one, guys. All right. And we're, and we're done. Good stuff. <laughs> we thought show live. <laughs> Quickest show ever. <laughs> Beastly Gamer, what have you been up to all week? It's been it's been a hectic week for me because uh, when I was working all week and, and when I get home and get a little bit of free time, spending with the kids, you know, they, they kind of gave me a Father's Day week, so every day they were doing something special for me. But when I had a little spare time, I went to The Last of Us Online. Shh, don't tell anybody. I was up last night till eight eight twenty, and my one year old, she was a soldier. She stayed up with me until eight o'clock, playing The Last of Us, and I just can't get enough of this game. I, I feel like such. A fanboy at this point, I feel pathetic because I didn't think that, that that would actually happen to me playing that game. But I'm telling you now, if you haven't played it, don't judge me. Let he, without uh, The Last of Us Online, cast the first stone. I think that's everybody in the in the free world. Yeah, okay. That game is awesome. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I've been playing. You know, I've been wanting to get back to other stuff. Of course, I do, uh, you know, videos for, for news and, you know, commentary and things like that. But I f now it feels tedious. It feels like a job. When I'm playing The Last of Us, I just I don't record anything. I just play it. It's so great. Well, what you got to do is you got to make some tips and tricks videos for the rest of us. So when we jump into the new game, we'll be ready to go. We won't be lost. Well, you can just give me the hacks. I really don't care about tips or tricks. Just show me the hacks. hacks. <laughs> you're, a you're a little cheater. <laughs> Unreal Gamer, what have you been up to all week? I know you're you're prepping for college. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I'm finally picking my courses now and applying for everything I need to apply for. But uh, this week, Team Fortress 2 had their expiration date update, and it's the best thing that ever happened. They brought in about four new weapons, and they brought in some new crates or whatever, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that because I started playing Team Fortress, and when I play Team Fortress, I get into, like, serious trading, and, like... The, since they made their own like currency in the game, it's so amazing how people can trade and they have their own websites where you can see how much uh, how much the item is worth and stuff. So it's pretty much what I've been doing for the past week. <laughs> no kid. Now you can actually make money by playing the game or trading. Yeah, trading yeah. If, yeah, if you some items you can put on the Steam market and the items go for about 150 bucks for like the best ones and it can go for from five dollars, ten dollars, and you get Steam money so you can buy other games with it. Oh, oh, so you're always getting money that you spend in the Steam store. So this is all... Yeah. This it's is all, all circulating within. Store, store? Yeah. Wow. I might Pornhub needs to come up with something like this. What's that? Is it Pornhub should come up with something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rich, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew, what have you been up to this week? Well, it's been a very busy week for me, working and stuff. So I did do uh, the garage sale. You know, the video game pickups, I did that. I showed off, you know, the PlayStation I got, different games I got as well. I did a product review for two different product reviews. One was uh, something called PlayBuds. Yeah, so I got a set of those too. Yeah, like those over there. And it's pretty pretty interesting, but it's cool that people commented in the comments, which that was the big thing, that they, they said it was too expensive for people. And next thing you know, they changed the price because of that. They they went on the website and they did it, which is cool because like companies like that, like, they don't really know a price yet. They're just starting out, so they just throw a price out there, and they want to test the market. That's why they have people, like, review the products for them, and then they'll figure it out later, which is cool. They, they lower the price right away, so that's that's very fair what they did. Um, and then I also did a review for the Mad, the Mad Cats fight pad. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I've been playing Ultra Street Fighter 4 a lot lately. I'm getting my butt whooped sometimes <laughs> online because, A, like, I, I just... They switch up the characters. They switch up. They made it more balanced. So, like the characters that I used to use, that were more like they're stronger characters. It's nerfed now. Like everyone's like normal like levels of stuff, and every the timing's different. So it's like a completely new game. It feels like 
which is interesting. But uh, I learned a lot of moves with Hugo and Poison. They're two characters I really like to use right now. Those are both so, new characters to this game, right? Yeah, they're both they're Street Fighter Cross Tekken. People use it, and like the the moves are similar, but the timing's different. So, but uh, yeah, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, I'm excited about it, and that's what I'm doing for most of the time. That's about it. Do you think that the game pad could replace a fight stick, or do you think it's? I understand why people use it. Cause I feel like yeah. you have like the whole control in your hand. You'll have to worry about like a big area to use. And all the six buttons are right in front of you, just like it would be for Fight Stick. So I understand now why people use it. I still think it's it's easier to get like the the moves because, like for example, some things will be like a half circle and like for Fireball or something like that. Like it's a lot quicker for me to use a joystick to do that than to actually use the floating D-pad. But like it with practice, you can get it done. And I noticed that like I'm actually getting a lot better using the Fight Pad. But, like, for me, it's just arcade stick. That's what I grew up on. You know, I grew up in arcades, so playing that. But, like, I completely understand for the first time why people won tournaments with the fight pad. I never understood. I'm like, how does someone with a fight pad beat someone with an arcade stick? And now I know why. So well, you, you got a shorter range of motion, right? You just got to move your thumb this far instead of move your whole hand this far. Yeah. Then I suppose yeah. that, in theory, it could be quicker. But I have the same experience you do, is that I find that most... Most game pads aren't as responsive as most joysticks, although there are they both vary widely. Like, a good joystick, I think, is better than a good game pad. I think it's responsive. I think that sometimes it drops the input when you do it a certain way, and uh, the joystick actually has like little like octagons. Like it has the spots, it has the slots. Even yeah. if it doesn't look like it, you feel it, it has a slot, so you won't miss it. You'll get used to it, and you'll feel exactly that the move that you're doing. It's actually going to do it in the game. So that's that's the difference for me. But like I said, with practice, people could still do with a fight pad. They know how to do it. So yeah, yeah. A lot of people uh, my age started okay. playing Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo Super Street yeah. Fighter. You know, so a lot of people grew up with game pads playing that game. Yeah. Yep. Whenever I used a fight stick, it I always had a higher degree of commitment to the moves, and that's what made me, uh, you know, do a lot better using the actual fight stick. You know, using the actual controller stick, joystick. Uh, rather than a game pad, because you actually, mentally, you have to prepare, and you put so much effort into each move, and for me, it always came out better using those type of pads versus a regular conventional controller. Yeah, also, I mean, raging is way better on a on a game stick. That's the whole <laughs> thing. Like, you're beating that thing and, like, throwing it. I mean, it's got heft to it. It could, it could go through sheetrock, really. <laughs> you can tell how how, how many like... walls are you destroying there, Brian Rabbit? Oh, not me personally. <laughs> I, I grew up in the arcade, like, pretty much, you know, so that's why, like, going to arcade is something I'm used to the arcade stick, and I think that's a difference. So if you're someone definitely from, like, 90s, like, arcade time, then without a doubt, then you'll you'll definitely relate better to arcade stick than a fight pad. But, I mean, yeah. if you find it cheap, though, I got it for $8 on Amazon. I mean, they're ranging from, like, right now, $12 all the way to $60 a fight pad. So if you find a cheap one, then that's definitely the, the way to go because way cheaper than an arcade stick. Those are, like, $150, $200. So. Yeah, for a good one. You can mm. get them cheaper, but they're they're not as good. They're not. They're not the uh, tournament they're, edition. The tournament editions are the big ones, and those are like range from like one fifty to two hundred dollars. I think they're overpriced, to be honest with you. Like yeah. they brag about having like Cherry MX switches, but you can get like a hundred and four of those on a keyboard for the same price as you get six of them on a game stick. Like what the what are you charging for here? <laughs> well, the difference is those those tournament editions are easy to mod, so you can open them up and just keep. You'll have them for years on end. Like right now, I'm modding both of mine, like arcade sticks, so that they'll be able to play for last gen and the next gen. You know, what I mean? and like, they'll be for every single. Um, they'll be for 360, Xbox One, PS4, uh, even PC and PS3. So that, that when you mod it like that, you can play for any console. So mm -hmm. this is an official Capcom PlayStation 2 corded uh, Street Fighter gamepad. It's never been used. And uh, I like to call it the Chung Lee Beaver because it has uh, Seriously. <laughs> it has uh, it's a hologram of her doing her you know her kick, and uh, well, it's pretty slick. I've never used this thing, and this is actually autographed by the, the team at Capcom. I mean, honestly, right I can't now. I can't see too well. Can you take it out of the box? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> never been used. Unboxing video live. <laughs> yeah, right. Unboxing my ass. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, All man. right, so uh, not too dirty. You brought up uh, in the pre-show, Capcom is actually available for sale now. 
their shareholders voted on this? Is this true? Like somebody could buy Capcom now for, for real I mean, don't, don't quote me on the exact <laughs> term. I don't remember the term that they used for it. There was something in the procedure, like procedure that prevented someone from having a full buyout from Capcom before. And when they went to go renew it, it wasn't able to be renewed anymore. So that leaves it wide open for a full buyout for Capcom. So, like, they could technically be bought out right now. I mean, you're still a little ways off from it because there's still a couple steps to do it, but it's available now. So that means that anyone with money could buy out. From what I heard, it, they're, like, man, I think it's, like, $75 million, $80 million, which is, like, a cost of a AAA game. So, like, reality, almost wow. anyone could buy that. Like, you're talking about even Sony could buy, even though people say they're in, in bad situations. I'm Sony looking for my wallet that. right now. <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think the chances are, Hector, of um, of Capcom being sold? Do you think this is fluff, or do you think this is I, I gonna think happen? they're going to have to survive. I think someone's going to buy them out. I just hope that, and I know it's going to be weird, but I hope that a, a publisher buys them out and like not the, the big three. And that's what I'm scared of. But I mean, to be honest with you, which I know it sucks. Not EA, but someone. Someone could buy them out. Not EA, maybe, but like someone, one of the publishers would buy them out because then they'll re- it'll remain multi plat Like, you want it to be on more than one console. You do not want this to be exclusive. It might be great for the person that gets it, but to be yeah. honest with you, it's it's going to kill out the brand. Not as much people are going to buy it. And don't forget, a lot of people aren't buying Resident Evil and all those games as much as they used to anyway. So now if you have if you simplify it to one console, it might be even less people buying. So I, I can see it now. All Street Fighters on the Wii U. Good news. I mean, I think Nintendo has the best relationship with Capcom. And I I mean, it's between Nintendo and Microsoft that has the best relationship with them, but I personally think that it's Nintendo and it's another Japanese company, so I would think that they would have first dibs on it. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't want them to be exclusive, especially if what would you do would be like, oh, like you guys want to play the next Mega Man or you guys want to play, uh, you know, Street Fighter, you have to get a Wii U. Like, yeah. that's but, but scary. But could you imagine <laughs> Ken and Ryu in the next Smash Brothers? What was that? Ken and Ryu in the next Smash yeah. Brothers? <laughs> well, that's cool, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> that you have to get a Wii U for that? That's kind of scary, like... To be honest with you, for and not just Wii U, if you have to get an Xbox One or you have to get PS4 only just to get one of those games, it really isn't fair. It's gonna kill off the fighting community because a lot of people they they prefer. I mean, a lot of people use like PS3s the most, but for <laughs> fighting games, but they also use Xbox 360s and PCs. Like, and you're gonna force them to use one. It's not gonna do well. That's why a lot of people don't like Killer Instinct because it's just on Microsoft. You know what I mean? And, and Capcom has never really practiced the exclusivity that other uh, developers have. They've usually had their games across multi plat so no matter how you look at it, even going to another developer, all these developers nowadays practice exclusivity deals, timed mm-hmm. contracts, and, and more than likely it would be Capcom, Street Fighter, Resident Evil, these games, timed exclusive for certain platforms, and it would just throw the whole feel of Capcom out of, out of whack for me. Yeah, Capcom well, has always been kind of an enigma to me. Back in like the Super Nintendo game days, they were like you couldn't beat them, right? They, everything they released, I wanted to play. They were they were just on fire, but they were releasing different games for the Genesis and for the Super Nintendo. Like yeah, they they would release uh, Street Fighter on both, but they'd have like Ducktales on sure. one and like yeah something else on another. It's it's weird. Yeah, like. I, the licensed games for Capcom, like anytime they had like a licensed game like DuckTales or something like that, I think they did really well with this, the original NES. Like they, they did that like perfectly. They perfected that. They were like the best games in those consoles. Like, like yeah. DuckTales, like that was one fun game, you know what I mean? But it just seemed like they lost their ways and like they, they didn't transition over when everyone else did and they're still like old school. Like the way they do business and stuff and it's not working still. Like... Like, how many updates can you do? Because it all started Street Fighter 2, right? Where, like, they had so many different versions of Street Fighter 2. Like, 13, 13 of them. You know what I mean? All the different versions of them. Like you said, 13. And they they got away with it. Now they, they start doing the same thing with everything else. And that's what they do. They rehash the same thing and make minor tweaks and stuff to it. And that's all they, they try to survive off that. And they realize they can't do that anymore. Hold so on. Are we, think, talking, are we talking about Capcom or Nintendo? Capcom. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, because like, oh shoot, that's that's <laughs> so poking a little fun of Nintendo over there. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'll I'll be interested to see if someone buys it. Who knows? Maybe you could have your uh, your Apple company uh, purchase Capcom. That's right. What about like Square Enix or uh, who else is out in Japan that's still still big? Is Square Square's Enix not, even big anymore? Square's not doing well in money. Right now, that- Square Enix has also lost shares, and that's why they had a deal with Sony. And Sony sold off their shares from Square. Remember, oh, I was like, Konami, the how are games? they doing? I know they're losing Con- developers over there like crazy. Konami's not doing well either. So Konami, uh, we'll see. I think what's going to save Konami right now is whenever that Metal Gear Solid game comes out. That that's- sucks to have your fortunes riding off of one game now. Well, that's enough. Yeah. Right? That, that game's enough to jack them a, a whole bunch of money. I, I feel like everyone's going to buy that game. Like, if you saw how many people bought the game that no one thought yeah. was the price, the $30 price, you saw how many people bought that, and they're yeah. upset. Imagine the people that are ready to play the full one. Like, that's a good point. So I think they're going to make a fortune off that. But I think that's on sale this week, too. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I saw that on sale. So, Ground um, Zeroes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, KF. Apple bought Capcom, I'd be a happy cap- camper. <laughs> get all those Capcom games ported over for iOS, get all those new games on the Apple TV gaming console that I am fucking positive is going to happen. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? As long as you get a controller, though, I, I don't think I'd like to play all that stuff. For Apple right now, you can get one right now. They suck, but hopefully <laughs> Generation 2 will be better. <laughs> Oh, wow. Hey, look, guys, before we move on to the next uh, topic of the show today, I, w- I got a question. Did any of you guys get a chance to see The Last of Us fan, fan film that I uploaded? Yeah, where yes. the hell did you get that? I was scared for you that you were going to get that. Yeah, like, this guy's going to get banned. I actually went to the, the, the makers of the film. and you did? got Yeah, and got okay. uh, permission from them to upload it. And they're very scared as hell for you. <laughs> no, they actually went to uh, to my, came to my page, saw my page, and then they they sent me some emails and told me that they would love for me to upload it and share it with with the world. Good. And uh, I thought that that film was awesome. You guys, what are your thoughts on it? Did you think that they uh, did a pretty decent job? I'm only halfway through the second episode, but I'm enjoying it so far. The acting is better than I expected it to be, and it's shot beautifully. Yeah, well, some of the characters in, in, in that film don't look like you'd expect them to, but some of them look almost photorealistic. Um, Joel's daughter, for one, uh, you haven't seen her yet, I don't think, uh, Briar Rabbit. No. But she looks like the exact same actress from the game. And uh, I'm trying to remember the leader of the Fireflies. What's her name? Uh, but, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, her. <laughs> She looks really similar too, but yeah, overall, I think they did a great job. If you guys haven't seen that film, check it out. It's on uh, it's on my page. Awesome stuff. I thought you directed. I'm like, wow, he's been directing this whole time. I didn't. Yeah, even but you put your credit <laughs> on. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you did a great job, man. I know people, man. I know people. Yeah, you <laughs> you spending that, you, you spend that YouTube money wisely and like yeah. directing. <laughs> Feature films coming out of the yeah, piece. You know how we do it. <laughs> All needs a damn handy cam. That's it. Oh, man. All right. So I do want to talk about the Apple TV console because the real reason I want to talk about this is because after I did the video, Not Too Nerdy commented on the video, and I'm like, damn, man, make some good points. <laughs> I didn't mean to kill your, your, your idea. Throw salt in the game, think, dick. I think, it, I think that... It, like the first thing I started out, and I always do that. I don't know why I do that. I start out saying, "That's a great video." Like, and like which ass. was a good but, video. But, <laughs> but, no, it, it, then I realized when I read it, it made it sound like I build you up to break you down. I really didn't mean to do that. <laughs> what, what I was trying to do, first of all, it was a really good video, and like I think you're right. They have the money to do this. They have the money to, to tempt it without any worries of losing it. But the thing is, like. There's a bunch of things that that, like, metal needs, all right? When you look at it, it looks really good. It looks on par with, like, PS3, the 360, Xbox 360. I thought it looked better than that, to be honest with you. Well, you you actually like the koi fish pond, like, in the water rippling and the butterflies and the leaves falling off the tree. I thought it looked better than the Xbox 360, PS3. It's it's still the same thing. Like, the thing is, you have to look that that's why it wasn't, like, uh, the photorealism. They weren't going for realism. They're going for cartoon to to, to hide some shadows, like and the Nintendo way of doing things. Yeah, so like it hides <laughs> shadows and stuff like that. But like when you see like the actual like footage of it, 
person, like you see that it's very similar to PS3 360, but the problem is right now that they're having is it's going to kill your battery. So the, the battery life for that, it, it overheats and the battery, like they're they're getting close, they're going to solve that problem without a doubt. But I, a video game console doesn't need a battery. Yeah, well, that's another thing though, <laughs> but you have to imagine when you en- enlarge that photo, the reason why it looks so clear and everything is because you're looking off a phone and or the retina display, or you're looking up on the uh, on iPad. So like that visually, it's gonna look amazing to you. But then once you enhance it to a larger TV, which most people standard, if you're gonna have that, it's gonna be on a 50 inch screen TV. That's what it's for. The Apple TV, you're gonna put that on your main TV wherever it is, which is usually a 50 inch screen or, or bigger. That's not gonna look great on that screen. So now you're gonna be stuck in. Like because you also need a seven chip. I forgot to mention that. That's another thing you need with this. So that's ex- pretty expensive. Or you could have an a eight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what. Here's the thing. That's pretty expensive as it is. So you're talking about you're gonna do that, and then it has to be in a hundred dollar range, right? Because it is not a hundred dollar range. I mean, I, I don't think they can do a console for a hundred dollars because they're gonna need local storage. They're gonna need a faster chip. Mm-hmm. They're gonna need more RAM. Exactly. And they're going to need some way of doing a controller. So I, I don't think they could do it for $100. Maybe and they keep, like, the current Apple TV at $100 and then do Apple TV plus games at, like, $250 or something like that. And then that's where you're stuck in between right here because that's the same problem Amazon Fire TV, Ouya, and all of them had. Who's your demographic now? Who are you aiming this for? Because now everybody who has an iPhone or an iPad who has games can now play them on the TV. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. They're not going to use – they're not going to take advantage of Metal, though. Because you have to be programmed specifically for metal. Metal has to be built in in the program. Otherwise, you're upgrading. It's not going to look any different. Right, metal, but all your old games will still run. Yeah. But any new games that are written for metal will work mm-hmm. across all three platforms. Exactly, but it That's has to be fantastic. built up from the ground up. And the problem right. is the people that they have that are offering to like do it, they said, I think there's EA, Ubisoft, they have a game loft. They have a lot of people signed on to it. All those people use Unity. And right. they, they use for cross-platform, which they program one program, and they use it for all platforms with Unity. So, like, it won't be building Metal from ground up. They will literally have to take time aside and build the game separate for Apple. And but it makes sense program. to do that because you're going to be selling to the most popular smartphone in the world, the most popular tablet in the world, and, oh, by the way, it'll also work on the Apple TV game console. This well, debate is awesome. Keep well, it, it, the question is, like, the question is, is, like, Will people take that chance on it? Because if you think about it, if you have a choice, you're going to be paying how much when you could get a PS3 or 360. No doubt. For that but price. they don't have to. They're not in like a Nintendo situation where they have to sell, you know, 10 million of these things in the first two years because mm-hmm. the developers are already going to be developing the games for that iPhone and the and the iPad. But anybody who does buy the Apple TV game console will get the added benefit of being able to play those games on their TV as well, and eventually. You know, there will be enough people on that platform to, to, you know, justify actually developing for it. But, you know, if the game is compatible with iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV, then it's not, you know, it's it's almost like a no-brainer. Well, yeah, we'll do it for the Apple TV, too, because, you know, it's the same it's the same screen dimensions as an iPhone. I mean, it, like 16 by 9. Mm-hmm. And if it looks awesome, like, it doesn't matter if it looks awesome on a tiny little screen or on a great big screen. It's well, going to look awesome. When you blow it up, it's going to – It's the pixels are going to be different. The pixels, the PPI will be different. Right. Well, it's 1280 it. compared to whatever. What is – I don't know what the real resolution of the iPhone is because they, they do the it. The iPhone is still shit. not – yeah, like it's still not uh, 1080p. It's still – it's lower than that. So, like, the thing is, like, the PPI is what you look at, though, because that's what – when you enlarge something, that's what you see, like, the tiny pixels and stuff. Their PPI yeah. is still lower because they believe the retina display is nothing past 330 because when you're holding a mobile device. But that doesn't equivalent when you go to something large anymore because now you need the PPI to be higher because you're going to have a bigger, like, pixel per inch now. It's a larger screen. But we're also getting a larger iPhone in the fall. Everybody yes. thinks we are. It's a 5.5 inch and a... Uh, 4.7 or something inch. There's right. two that so, they're talking about. So with a larger screen iPhone with a better processor, then we can expect the graphics to get better. Again, hopefully that will translate to good games on TV. One last point, though. Here's the, <laughs> here, here's the killer point. 
the I want my Apple that, console. <laughs> the, the killer point is, are they eventually? Apple is going to have to move the 4K streaming. Absolutely. Now here's the thing. They want to be the first. They're not going to want Amazon. You know Amazon's going to do that for their next Amazon Fire. They're going to move straight to 4K because they have the streaming capability as well. They're going to move to that. They want to be the first so that yeah. when you get a 4K TV, you think of Apple TV first. Now, if you have a 4K TV, okay, streaming, you're streaming everything 4K. You have a 4K TV. You're now going to have a resolution for metal that's not be able to go up to that resolution. But well, what's the purpose of metal? That's another, but that's another reason why they'll bring the A8 to the Apple TV so that they can process that 4K stream. It's not, it's not the chip itself. Even they have a, a stronger chip right now. That's not. They have to redesign metal again. So that's why I'm. But metal I'm is just for 3D. Metal doesn't. Metal's not for movies. Metal's just for 3D. Yeah, but I meant like you still the the people that will most likely get that if it's 4K, they're gonna already start moving on to 4K TV and stuff like that. So yeah, okay. how are you gonna have the one thing streaming for movies at 4K and you're not even going to be able to do anything with gaming or anything up to but that nobody, resolution. Nobody games in 4K. I mean, P some PC guys do, but it's it's not a good experience, even with, like, high, high-end graphics cards. But, I mean, you wouldn't even be uh, streaming... You wouldn't even be playing in 1080p either with that, because... Well, I think you could be. With the... With, yeah, sure, with metal. metal and the A8. I, I think it's reasonable to think that... If they have A8, they didn't even announce A8 yet. I mean, well, yeah, they didn't <laughs> announce an Apple TV gaming console either, but, I mean... I have lots of hopes and wishes for the world. <laughs> That's a stretch. I mean, they, if anyone could do it, I think they'll do it. But the problem is they have to have people designed for it. And I think the only people who do it, like Infinity Blade or something like that, like those are the things you do. But like, once again, that's another touchscreen. Now you have to start changing these things into controls. Like that's another. that was a problem with the OUYA. Like what the problem that you had with the OUYA – and uh, Amazon Fire TV, it's all these games that they're pouring over are touch-based games. How That's do you true. resonate to that? You know what I mean? Are yeah. you going to start making only console games because it's not a console? You're not going to sell it as a console because their bread and butter is streaming movies and stuff. Yeah. You want that. That's what Apple wants. Apple isn't a game in first or game in second. And that's where they get caught in between again, just like everyone else. Like, you know, am I for gamers or am I for... The streamers, like the but it, all they have to do is just put it out there, and like I think the market will decide if they want it, if they want to play games on it. They already have controllers, right? That you can use with it. They have the metal. I don't. What do you call that? Is it an SDK? I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Okay, so they have the metal SDK, which allows API. for API. Yeah. API. Okay, so they have the metal API, which allows for better graphics on the hardware. They have the A8 chip coming out in September or October with the new iPhone. You know, they have all these things that just shout, like, if we put these on the Apple TV, we could have a gaming console, and it would basically cost us nothing because, like, it's already, like, built into the ecosystem. Plus, we already have the games because there's millions of games available for the iPhone and the iPad, and, you know, all we got to do is just allow developers to select another screen resolution for the Apple TV. Well, you have to port them over. All those games that Amazon them did... They have to port over because you need to use a controller or something. Like you have. But there's to already a controller for that iPhone. Like you can already use that. Yeah, but they're gonna have to make sure it's Bluetooth. Here, here's the biggest problem. Is <laughs> 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 EA, Ubisoft, of them? They say they're on board, right? Yeah. In their history, have they ever, when someone's not selling too well, do they ever wait for you to? To sell your uh, console or anything before they they just. But give the up iPhone on is the selling platform. like gangbusters. The iPhone, not Apple TV. Apple right. TV is not Roku. Roku you, sells you're, more. You write one game and it works on both. Roku sells more than Apple TV. Even I was a Fire TV starts selling a lot. Now you're mm -hmm. talking about someone else coming into the market back and trying to get their spot back. You know what I mean? So. EA and Ubisoft's be like, oh, you're not selling console. We're just gonna stop making games. I wonder who they did that to already. But they're not. They're not. They're not just making the game for the Apple TV. The one game they make works on all iOS eight devices. It works so, not just iOS. Games. They they do it for Android as well. It's right, cross platform. Right, yeah. 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 So I I don't know. It just seems like as a publisher. You know, all we have to do is include controller support and another resolution, which, you know, now they're going to have to 
include a lot of resolutions, right? Because you're going to have to support iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPhone, whatever the iPhone 6 resolution is going to be. The iPad has two different resolutions, three, including the mini iPads. So there's already a lot of resolutions to support. Adding 16 by 9 1080p, I mean, it's just adding another one and controller support, which you know a lot of people are going to start wanting, I would imagine, soon. And they have to make sure that it, when they do that for uh, Android, that's going to work for Android as well. Fucking Android. That's, that's <laughs> the problem, though. They're going to do that the whole time. Like they they have to. Well, EA is not going to care about iPhone alone. They're going to care about all platforms. Ah, I want my Pippin too. God damn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm hearing this 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 conversation. Well, I, can, I guess I can call it jousting, going back and forth with you two. Um, do you think that the PlayStation Vita TV or the PlayStation TV will will be any kind of competition for this type of peripheral? It's oh, different. Yeah. I well, think it, it is, but it isn't if you think about it. Because I think that's uh, that right there. They already have a whole gaming lineup. They're going to be able to play PlayStation One, all the the. The PS Vita games. All the now. And, and the, the thing is, you'll be able to, to play your PlayStation 4 from another TV. And so, PlayStation Now. Yeah, Street. PlayStation so, Now. They, they're like a whole new level of game. That's why I'm thinking this whole Apple thing, there's going to be so much competition for people that's just such a small market for right now. Man, fuck Apple. I think... <laughs> <laughs> See, the people that had the Vita games and stuff like that, or any PSP games that wanted to see on the big screen... Like, those are ones that are going to buy that alone. So, like, that's why I think you they know. have a whole separate market on top of it. They just have it, I'm buying it just for that feature because now yeah, I can – You can stick your Vita games directly inside of it, right? Can't you put yeah. your Vita games right yeah. inside of it? That's mm-hmm. awesome, man. You can play your Vita games on a TV, and you can capture your Vita games. Oh, first please. Time. This is and it's 100 bucks, please. And you can download bucks. it onto it directly. Yeah. Because you already have that on your yeah. account. Yeah, and you could and you could buy those the memory slots. It costs a bunch of money, and, you know, but you're gonna need, you're gonna need a lot of memory for that. Yeah, right that's a good now. point. <laughs> Who's gonna be the first one to hack a sand disk onto that thing? Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for that for years. I'm not I'm not condoning it, but I'm waiting for it. Why is no one Why has no one created uh you know a, their own version of the Vita? Remember, is it a, that's is it a, a one thing they is it illegal to, to, to fabricate your own and sell it like another third-party company? Absolutely. People have tried, and they banned them. They banned your account. People have tried it already. They banned your whole I'm, account. I'm speaking of like a company like SanDisk. Yeah, they, keep, they can't do that. No. No. They're, no. They, they, they limit it, so it's only there's no third-party support for that. It's Sony, only Sony. You fail for that. And on Sony. top of it, it's not even like Sony, other Sony products, the specific Vita one. Like, yeah. that's the thing that sucks because I have Sony, like, like Sony products, like memory cards. Memory no stick, bro? Yeah, I have, I have everything. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> See, uh, the, the, the PSP, the Memory Stick Core Duo, that one is just a regular uh, Pro Duo. Hmm. And, and you could hack your, your PSPs with it and all kinds yeah. of stuff. How, how are we supposed to hack our PlayStation Vitas? When you I, give mean, us I think that's part of the reason they made it a proprietary technology. It definitely you is. You can put that Memory Stick Pro into a computer, probably only a Sony computer, <laughs> and uh, you can put whatever software you wanted on it. Now, like, that thing is only good for the Vita. It's a completely... And that's why Sony created the Vita where you couldn't connect anything to it. There's nope. no... Output, input, nothing. They did it on purpose so no one could hack it and put all these free games inside of it. That's what they did. I mean, you yeah. have to use the content manager just to connect it to your PC or your PS3. So, yeah, they, they've got full-on security detail on that thing. And it Sorry. is it, it has been hacked. People actually have hacked them, but it, it usually comes out with a PlayStation Network game that someone finds a, you know, a loophole in and they're able to, you know, I, I don't know exactly how they do it. Do I look like a hacker? But, yeah, it's been done. Sure. Sony, Sony's be like, be like, wait, so you guys can't take free games from me, but we'll give you free Vita games. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want? We're already giving you the games. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know <laughs> like, all right, thanks, Sony. <laughs> are, are any of you guys though uh, excited about the PlayStation Vita TV now over in Japan? This thing, this thing didn't do well over there, believe it or not. Uh, PlayStation Now is not out yet, and that's yeah. pretty core to its functionality, I would think. I was reading an article today about PlayStation Now, and uh, you know, since it's in its Early stages, some of the pricing is really uh, iffy. I think Final Fantasy Thirteen Two was five dollars for four hours yeah, of that game. The pricing and is weird. 
Yeah, it's like you can pay uh, four hours, eight hours, one week, or one month, and the one month was thirty dollars. They're gonna Just, they're gonna charge per game on that per game. Per game, uh, I would I would have hoped that you could just pay a premium, either monthly or annually, like you do with and the play PlayStation. Any game. Yeah, well, just but, so you guys, go ahead. Uh, go as ahead. you say, I, I am part of the, the beta. I mean, I'm not allowed. allowed I'm not going to go specifics. It? I'm not going specifics, but they're not going to. Uh, they they not they didn't officially announce that they're going to do a subscription or not. Not to mention those prices are just base prices. I'm sure they're not going to be there. I mean. If they are, they're ridiculous. But then again, yeah. some prices are not ridiculous because you pay seven dollars, or you pay uh, seven dollars for a week. That's not a ridiculous price at all. That's like that's better than most places at all to rent for a whole week for seven dollars. So like that's a good it's, point. It's that on balance point. right now. So like if you see seven dollars for a week or five dollars for four hours, that's really on balance. They're just pointing out the prices right there. They're gonna get fixed. But also, who knows that they have a thing like if you pay thirty dollars for like the whole month or whatever, ninety days. What if like you reach surpass that you automatically buy the game, or what if they had something in place that if you rent something for the, the value of the game, a they certain like dollar the amount it becomes yeah, yours. They, they, yeah, it becomes you get the actual game. Who knows what they're doing right now? You know they didn't announce any of that, so that could be something that they might do as well. If that you might be part of what the beta is too, is just kind of testing out what people's tolerance is for pricing. Yeah, so like that's that's another thing, but the the most important thing is subscription. They didn't announce it yet. You know the, no. the whole service is really good service. Like it, it's iffy sometimes. The internet, my internet, it's it works. I know people that it's not working too well their internet. So it are depends you having? Are you having any issues as far as streaming and lag right now? I had for it depends on the game. It's funny because like you would think a fighting game, which I'm not gonna go specific to games. So I don't wanna go full detail, but the fighting game that I did play. You would think a fighting game was something that you need no lag free. You can't have lag at all in a fighting game. That was flawless compared to this other game that was a, a third person shooting game or whatever. Let's just say that. And that one lagged like crazy. Like mm -hmm. it was lagging pretty bad. But that was also an older version of that game. So mm -hmm. that's that's the thing you look at. It's like it's weird because one's newer and that one was working perfectly. And that's a fighting game, so it depends what game it is. It's going game to game, which one works great and which one doesn't. So, if you had to wager, and this is for everybody, uh, Unreal and Briar, and of course not too nerdy, if you had to wager, do you think they would go the route of uh, a, a subscription? Oh yeah, no, no. Okay, and do you think if this thing takes off, it'll it'll bode not well for companies like GameFly? Oh yeah, they're fine. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, GameFly is what fifteen dollars a month, right? I mean, yeah, what? but the actual disc. You're talking about an actual disc compared to streaming oh, something. Sure. So sure. streaming, it's guaranteed. It's only on your internet. It's based on your internet and their servers at the time. So you're talking about a streaming service compared to an actual disc, and the actual disc works way better than any streaming service will ever work. So that's the thing. Like, but if you're talking about something like a game. Because sometimes for me, I get Gamefly. Like, I have Gamefly, but I use that for games that I'm not planning on buying to try it out and play it and stuff like that. I guess I might switch over to PlayStation now just to try the game because that's all whole intent. That's the purpose of me doing it, to try the game instead of actually purchasing the game. And it'll probably save me more money than Gamefly. But well, Do you think it might work better if they were able to preload portions of the game, uh, stream it, pre-stream it to your uh, system to to lessen the, the delay or the lag. Like, say, for instance, you, you, you want to rent a game, and you might be going to the store, you'll be back in an hour. You can actually start the stream or start downloading data so that when you come back, you've already got an hour worth of data. Do you think that's possible? And if it was possible, could it improve the, the experience overall, you think? No, but it's they, not... The PS3, it, I don't think they're built for that kind of stuff right now. Are they? Yeah, they can't. The, the whole point of it, so, it, like, for example, like, you're going for PS4 or PS3 games. Like, they're different. Cell processors is not going to play on this version, the uh, x86 architecture. That's the whole reason why they did that in the first place. To, so they, you could go from behind. But don't forget, there's people that are going to have TVs that are going to be able to stream this, too. You can't download on the, to the TV, stuff like that. So the whole purpose of this is just for it to, to use their high-end computers and every input that you put in the controller is going to move their computer and then it'll send a message back to your screen to show it moving. So that's the in, that's the lag that you see. Okay. So hopefully there's no interruption between 
your internet going to their computer and back. So if that's okay, you're going to have a natural delay regardless because it has to go all the way to their computer and bounce back to yours. So there's always going to be a delay. Do you think that, uh, what do you think of the possibility of games like Call of Duty uh, using this Gaikai service? Because, of course, those games, you need 60 frames per second. You need minimal uh, delay in order for you to even be good. Do you think that they, they might opt out of putting games like that on PlayStation now? Well, for me, it'll be great because then I have an excuse why I suck. But, uh, <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say that. Work if they design the game around it. So, like, I don't know if it'll work for Call of Duty, right? But if somebody designed a game around this, so the game is running on the server, and the only lag you get is from the server to your home console. Like, so everybody's, there's no host advantage, right? Everybody's playing on the same server. I think that could work. Like well, everyone's getting the same lag. Well, yeah. not everybody's getting the same lag, but the lag works differently, and nobody's getting that host advantage that's so common in console games. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'd be interested to see somebody. Right. Talk. All you have to do, since you play Call of Duty all the time, all you have to do, if you see someone running on the right side, just shoot to the left side. Eventually, they're going to run into your bullet. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to do, just shoot ahead, and they're going to run into your bullet. Works 40% of the time, 100% <laughs> of the time. All the time. <laughs> and, like, the great thing is you can rage quit and exit out of the game, and it's delayed, so they think you're still playing for a couple <laughs> seconds. Or, you know, and then you just get disconnected. But, you know, that's just me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, think, uh, I think it's a really interesting technology. I, I'm not in the beta, so I'm looking forward to seeing it kind of go live, I'll definitely subscribe to it as soon as it comes out. I'll, I'll put it this way, way better than on live. That on live service yeah. years ago, that I mean, they still have it, I think, but on live, it's way far, far advanced than that. It's just that it's similar process, so. Yeah. And, and I really like the idea of being able to just get access to games that maybe I sold like three or four years ago or like maybe I didn't get around to mm -hmm. and just be able to, you know, play around with them for a couple of days and then not ever have to worry about it again, you know, like not have the disc around, not have to worry about eBaying it or bringing it to GameStop or it taking up space on my hard drive, you know, all of that stuff. I just like that idea. For me, like, I think like if it's like an RPG or MMO or something and you're able to stream that on the Vita on the go, like where you don't need it to be super quick, I think that would be amazing. For me, that's where you don't have to have the best internet for it to be, you know, it, even if it's lagging, it's okay for those type of games. I think yeah. that would be great on the Vita to go. You know, that that's something a big game changer for the Vita itself. So I, st I just don't like the Vita thumbsticks. Like, it, I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. I, I've been wanting to get uh, Borderlands on my Vita, but, you know, after fiddling around with it a little bit, I think it'll just be the articulation won't be there. You just won't feel like you're totally in control like you do using a DualShock 4, 3 yeah. or can you, 360. Can you use a DualShock 4 with the Vita? Yes. You can pair it? They, that's what the the 1.7 update did. They also have that. So you can now use your DualShock 4 with that. That, that might be good. And you can, use a, you can use the DualShock 4 with the PlayStation TV. So they're going to yeah. sell that in two packages. One of them is yeah. going to include a, a DualShock 3 controller and one of them and a game, right? The... The Lego game. Lego, Lego game, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't get that. I would get the. Uh, I'd get the one that comes out for a hundred dollars. Use your own DualShock Four, and I mean everybody's got an HDMI cable hanging around. Do you guys or think eight. that um, using <laughs> PlayStation Now that they can do something with PlayStation Plus, where every month you can get one of those rentals for free, or every month you can get a discount on your uh, monthly subscription service because you have PlayStation Plus? You think that Sony's looking into doing something like that? I would think they've got all sorts of ideas, right? I think yeah. they're going to judge based on how popular the beta is and like what kind of people's... I'm sure they're getting data, right? It's like, uh, you know, okay, we put this game out at $8 per day, and we put this other game out at $8 per month. You know, which one is more popular? How do we make the most money? Like, yeah, sure, like a ton more people are using the $8 per month one, but are we actually making more money off of the fewer people who are doing the eight dollars per day one? You know, so I'm sure they're judging all that data, trying to figure that out, and they're still right in the middle of the war with the Xbox One, so they're definitely going to want to try and add value to people buying PlayStation Fours. So yeah, I would I would guess they would do something. Hmm. Okay. Exciting but they will do Last of Us, I bet, not until after they uh, release the remastered edition. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I don't know, because that's the game that they had at... Uh, oh, that's right. That's but they won't discount they, it, right? They, dis- they displayed it. They displayed that. They was running that and God of War, essentially. So, like, those are the two that... The first two games that they had running on the PlayStation now, so... I don't know what that means if that's they're going to do point. it. I don't know, but I don't know that they're going to do it because they just, what just happened? <laughs> no, I thought Beast of the Game was laughing at something. I didn't know. I was, look, I was looking at our lineup of, of uh, stuff and uh, what, what Mr. Rabbit wrote about me like four lines down. <laughs> <laughs> you see my it's giveaway true. video, Beastly? It's true. Uh, I, I saw it, but I didn't get a chance to watch it. I, I want to know how you got your goddamn name in the hat. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's so funny, dude. <laughs> That's what you were showing me when my, when my sound was off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> dude, by the way, like, I don't know if you realize this, like, I, I comment on that video, I was like, I'm like, you said the wrong name. I thought you were supposed to say not too nerdy, and somehow Enrique came out. I don't know. Like, <laughs> but I, I, that's awesome, Enrique won, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was good to see that. That was totally... Oh, really, Enrique? Good shit. Yeah, yeah that was so guy, random, man. too. He had out the hat. I was like, wow, man, that's awesome. That yeah. was like... That's a good prize, man. Can't wait for you to give us a prize, too. (laughs) I give you a prize of my presents every week. (laughs) I haven't got got a present yet. Oh, you said presents. I want a present. All right. right. So I want to talk about the Beastly Thoughts Tournament. I want to talk about it. I want to to hash out some rules. I want to hash out some games. I want want this to get going because I'm excited about it. Unreal Gamer, what game do you want to play? Talk to me, brother. Talk to me about Titanfall. Put the sound on the spot. Now he's got to think about it. Now, which game we have a tournament in? Yeah, we're going to yeah. have a lot of something, tournaments. But... Something online, something that we all can play together. That you well, can you play here for last everybody. Week. You, you had a, let me talk about... Okay, so let me talk about the idea. Okay. And we got to hash it out because I think it's a great idea. I think that I think that we'll have fun doing it, and I think people will have fun watching it. And make yeah, sure you clarify the part where uh, Unreal Gamer pays for every game for everybody. Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> College boys got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the here's the setup. Here's the initial idea, right? Yeah. Is that everybody on the Beastie Thought show picks one game, right? And then we have a tournament where, like, for a week or maybe two weeks, depending on the game and how hard it is to... Uh, get people together, and whether it's like a game that everybody plays all in one lobby, or if it's a game that, like, you know, somebody picks Street Fighter, then it'd be a game that everybody has to kind of get two versus two on, or one versus one on, so it'd take a little longer, right? But let's say that everybody, you know, picked a game, okay, and then they set up their own rules for their week. So, like, let's say if Not Too Nerdy picks Super Street Fighter, then everybody would have to get a copy of the game, mm-hmm. everybody would have to not too nerdy would have to set up the rules like here's the rules right a single elimination you play you know you're in this bracket you're in this bracket you're in this bracket you guys figure out when you're going to play record it post it on your channel and then as the tournament brackets go you know we can talk on twitter or talk on skype or talk on google hangouts to you know schedule the matches until we have a winner and once we have a winner like, everybody from start to finish gets a certain amount of points, and you carry those points into, let's say, Beastly Gamer picks a game. Let's say he picks... What's that? Let's say Beastly Gamer picks uh, Barbie's Dream Adventure. <laughs> and everybody's... <laughs> Dude, I'm a beast in that game. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would that'd be a little different, right? Not everybody can't play that online, I assume. I don't, I've never actually played it before. Uh, the multiplayer. So maybe you got to do a speed run, like the longest you can go without dying, right? Mm-hmm. And then you, like, again, it's scored, so the first place gets like seven points, through, you know, and so on. And then how, how do you know in a situation like game. that? In a situation like that, how do you know the person isn't dying and then just recording new footage until they get the best run that they can? Honor system. Damn I it! I mean, that's all we can do, right? That's a great point. Look at it. Look at it. Twenty five I mean one time to do this. Twenty five tries. <laughs> no one says that you have to do it one try either. Nobody invite uh Figco Inc. to do Battle Toads because he actually beat the speeder bike level of Battle Toads. You guys ever see that video? Yeah. No. That's no, one of the most impressive video. videos I've ever seen on YouTube. He he has a video or a series called Just One Life. And you guys know about the Battletoads. Uh, speeder bike level, right? 
It's like yeah. it's like it's widely regarded as one of the hardest levels ever, and he it's beat timing, it. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, don't invite him to do Battletoads because <laughs> we're not gonna beat him. <laughs> but yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you guys like the idea? Do you want to do? Do you want to start picking games? I mean, I'm that, going to just. Fight I'm assuming that Marco or Unreal Gamer is gonna automatically choose Team Fortress, so I might as well get ready for Team Fortress. So I'm just... Well, that's the thing too. Is right. Some of us, some of us won't be available for some games. So I was kind of yes. thinking, <laughs> I was kind of thinking that everybody gets like one voucher, right? You can't, you can't compete in every one, and that way, like, let's say that everybody wants to do um, Team Fortress. I don't have a PC, I can't play, so I won't compete in that week. And then, like, if I want to play Titanfall, Beastly Gamer doesn't have a an Xbox One, so he wouldn't compete in that week, right? And then, to make it fair, we do a voucher system where everybody can take one week off without, like, losing points, but you also you have to take at least one week off. Okay. okay. How, about, how about we do it, like, a World Cup style, since it's World Cup right now, that uh, we do the point system, so... If you win the game, you get three points. If you tie, or you get one, and then like that's the most people, the most points in that group makes it on to the next round. So it's oh, not like oh, so you don't compete next week. Yeah, uh, was that you don't? So you wouldn't compete in the next week if you were at the bottom of the barrel. Well, you still get your two games in. Like you can still do it within two weeks if you want to for the the first matches. You know what I mean? Because then like you'll face each other once. For example, if it's just us, for example, right? Say if uh, me and Unreal Gamer played each other, and like Unreal won. This is a hypothetical situation. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. No, it's <laughs> but then, I feel prophecies be fulfilled. <laughs> he gets he gets the three points, and then uh, between you guys, whoever gets the three points, and then we face we switch it up again in the same group. We'll just switch it up, and we face someone else in the same group and see how many points you get to move on. That's it. I like that idea. I so like it's just idea. like just like basic World Cups, and then you see who moves on. So it's not like the first group. Even if you lose the first game or whatever, it doesn't really matter yet because yeah. you still have a chance to catch up. It's the most of the – so it's really three games. That's how the World Cup works. It's three games in the first group. So we'll see how many people are doing in total, and we'll get to decide it. But that will probably be the best way. So then it really doesn't matter if you lose the first time because it, it, it matters, like, all the points you get in total to see who wins one. Now, can somebody steal your points, and we can just call it the family feud system? <laughs> <laughs> I think that each week could have different rules. Depending on whose game it is, they can make their own rules. Sweet. That way, all sorts of incredibly shena great shenanigans can happen. There are no rules. No, <laughs> I'm letting you guys know I'm coming hard. Fighting time, y'all. I hope y'all ready. Every fighting game I'm going to dominate in. Every and then single we should one. probably make a rule about like the cost of the game, right? Like, you can't pick a Dreamcast game that costs $180 and you're the only person who can find it, right? I'm going. I'm going to find all <laughs> PS3. I'm going to find all PS3 games and mm -hmm. PS4 games because I know on PSN you could find like tons of good, still online fighters and even some shooters for the low low. That's Ebonics for very inexpensive. Yeah. And um. Well, yeah. you guys. I mean, I could pick up some games at a garage sale. I mean, what's good? I'll, I'll pick up some games, send it to you guys. What's going on? I, I'll find uh, it. <laughs> <all right. laughs> right, yeah, that sounds like fun. I still don't know my game, though. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking about it the whole time. I'm like, think of a game that's like, that'll be easy for everyone to play, that you'll have to download something on top of it. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I was thinking about... Like Ultra Street Fighter 4, but I'm like, no, it's gonna cost too much now because if you didn't get it for free back in the day for yeah. the PlayStation, then like it's gonna cost forty dollars for the game now. You know what I mean? But so you it's could like, do like one of the older Street Fighter Street Fighter 4s that'll be readily available at any GameStop for probably less than twenty bucks, right? They're they're pretty expensive now because and you can use any Street Fighter and then do an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> so like every Street Fighter is now they they jacked up the price so you could grab that Street Fighter 2 upgrade it to Ultra. I'm checking dickheads. now. I'm checking <laughs> it's it on purpose. Here. So. Well, it'd be right. nice if we... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, I had to pick something on PC because Steam sale is going on right now and it'll probably cost about like, five bucks maybe. Yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, I don't know yet, but uh, I'll let you guys know in about a couple days, see what's good. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, nope. you're, you're going to be up at bat here because what I have here is all our names. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to put them in this hat, this beautiful 
hat that I bought for uh, Mother's Day this year. <laughs> no, I it to be first. <laughs> yeah, this is, is this part of your second job, or how does that go? <laughs> if I could, I would. <laughs> Way to go, I know. So, my luck, it's going to be me, and I don't have a game to pick yet. Watch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> go ahead. I already know it's me. <laughs> Very official. All right, let me pick it out. What the? How did this get in here again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm not looking. To... Oh, God. Can you guys read that? DC Gamer? Uh, that's no. Unreal. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Unreal. What kind of five in there, too? Unreal, not too nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I put, I I put just... nine to five in there, too. You guys can click on that link and see that price for that Street Fighter 4. It's pretty damn cheap. How much is it? It is five dollars and ninety-four cents. Oh, that's a Street Fighter 4, man. It's hard. I think I still have that for PlayStation 3. It's that's only six. It's, it's only ten bucks. Yeah. Okay. So, what we'll do. Should I, you know, should I just go through the list of everybody and like order it? Do you guys want to? Do you guys want to do the drawing next week? It doesn't another matter. Week baby. to think about it. Man, I'm down, baby. I was born in the streets. Or do you do you want to take the drawing out of it and just pick somebody who's got a game ready? Yeah, let's just. Yeah, I want to wait. I, I don't want to pick a game that everybody's gonna be like, oh, that game sucks. Because maybe tomorrow there might be a better game that's on. No, Steam. that's fine. Like even if it sucks, yeah. it doesn't matter if it sucks. That would be even funnier, I think, if it's like a horrible game. <laughs> like, no <laughs> simulator. <laughs> Dino D Day. I don't know how you score it, but it's up to you to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you guys better get your house building up. Come doing Minecraft. That's the first. <laughs> thing. Oh, oh, <laughs> bring it on. No. Who can build the best house? Like who? Who can build the White House? The quickest. And don't you got to do every that. room in the White House, too. That's, that's the White House? How do you see that? They won't even release plans for that place. <laughs> but I'm right. not even American. <laughs> Stephen Harper's house. <laughs> he ain't even American. Shit. Well, I, my game is pretty obvious, right? I'm going to pick either Titanfall or Call of Duty. Okay. Because well, everybody's got it. It's yeah. easy. You know, everybody can play it. We've all got PlayStation 4 copies of it, right? Yeah. I don't have Call of Duty. You don't have Call of Duty. I don't have Titanfall. Yeah, I have Titanfall for only for PC. Titanfall. I mean, I guess... Listen, listen, guys. Right now, I put this in the link, and everybody who's watching can get take advantage of this. Right now, EA and Origin, you can get Titanfall the entire game, not a demo, for forty eight hours for free right now. If you sign up through Origin, um, I, I just did a video on it. It's on my my page. I'll give all you guys a link at the end of the show. But if you don't have it, and it's something you guys like want to do over the next day or two, on PC, I could always plug my PS4 controller into that and we could we could give it a go. But yeah, you can get Titanfall for free through Origin right now for 48 hours. That's sick. I wish they were giving away on the PlayStation 4. Me and uh, me and 9 to 5 were trying to play it yesterday and there's hardly anybody playing. On the PlayStation 4? What do you, what do you mean? Well, I'm sorry, Xbox One. <laughs> I was about to say shit. I know, everyone I mean, this some like, mind-breaking news. <laughs> Yeah, but it's free right now. I just did a, a real quick, you know, almost micro machine like uh, video <laughs> to let people know that it was coming out and talking really fast and shit. Yeah, you should see it's like a ghost town in freaking in the PC version of Timefall. Like, really? It's bad. 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 That's why I it away. It takes, it's bad. Wow. <laughs> what about you guys? I know it's kind of a little off subject. Are you guys still having a lot of fun with that? Briar Rabbit and Unreal? Are you guys still playing? I had a blast. Playing? Yeah. We were playing it yesterday. I had a blast. Okay, good, good. Unreal, what do you think? What, about Titanfall? Yes. Uh, I, to be honest, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, just think, Jesus, I haven't even turned on my Xbox. The only, re the only way I turn on my Xbox is if I move my office chair and, like, the leg hits the Xbox on. And I'm just like, no, why are you turning on? You just turned my Xbox on. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, ha I was going to play yesterday, but I had to do stupid uh, university stuff, but... Uh, I haven't really turned on my Xbox One. There's no reason to. Nothing really, uh, really sparked me to turn it on. So wait, wow. so wait, Aaron Paul didn't uh, he didn't turn on your console yep. for you? When yeah, he, he did. On? He turned everybody's shit on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Oh, me and uh, me and nine to five, we're gonna try and play Battlefield Four on the PlayStation Four. We kept trying to join game, join game. It kept kicking us out. It was rebooting the entire game on the PlayStation Four. Finally, we just got sick of it. We're like, let's go play some Titanfall. And uh, <laughs> we ended up playing fashion. Titanfall, having a blast. Sounds good. Oh, man. all right. I, I think tick, I, I, got, I got a game. There we go. All right, what's the game? It's called The Hidden. The Hidden. That's that okay. So it's fun. All right. What, so how do we uh, score it? Well, it's on Steam. It's a uh, it's a source mod, so it's pretty much free. And, uh, and one guy's the hidden, so he's like half and he's like barely visible. You can just see like a heat uh, heat in the air, and you can jump really high. And you guys uh, are like the SWAT team. You have to go around and find him and kill him, or he has to stab you. And look up. It's really fun. Uh, it's free. It's What's free. The, That's my the favorite. Oh yeah. You guys are like. It's fun. It's more, it's not more of a like competitive. It's more of a, like it's a fun game. So how do we score it in a it's tournament? Called the hidden. Hmm. Well, who kills who kills well, the we, guy we can first? Who gets that first? Yeah, we we can make it. Hmm. I got this. Well, we can make our own private lobbies first of all. We can all be in there. It's oh, you can. Hide. Yeah, you can make your own private lobbies. It's just source mod, so it's kind of just. It's really it's a Wait, gears so mode kind of thing. Kill each other and stuff like that. No, just one guy is the hidden, and uh, he's like half invisible. He can jump in this uh, really high and hide, and he has to kill you with his knife, or he's got like two. Oh, oh wait, I see this before. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. You know what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. So, um, the point is though, how do you win that for the hidden? Though, the person that's being the one that has to hide. Like, how do you win that though? Yeah, you don't hide. You have to kill the. Uh, you have to. Kill no, the no, no. He, he he's talking about competitively between all of us. So he just you just gotta take everyone out. And that counts as a win. That counts Not as a win. Everybody. The SWAT is actually on teams. If the SWAT and maybe we could draw a name out of a hat. Whoever's the hidden. Oh yeah. Also, oh, it. it's 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 a multiplayer. All yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's yeah. team based. So that's why I'm like. Yeah, it's hard. All the games that I have on Steam are all team based. <laughs> I mean, uh, unless you have on Steam, they're fine. With a team base, if it's like you go by whoever had the most kills, you could do that or something like that. That's why. So even if it's a team game, it's fine. You go by kills, the amount of kills, whoever had the most kills or had the most points. You know what so I mean? Is this like Evolve or something? Is it like four v one? No, it it could be like a it could it's usually like an eight v one. There's nine people in the lobby versus one versus one, but the one guy is really hard to see and kill, and he's very powerful. That's the thing. I can't oh, so find it. it. I'm sharing like my screen. Wall. I can't find it. Um, just called the hidden. Yeah, I, I went. I googled it, and it took me right to the hidden. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just a mod for Half Life. Half Life yeah. Two. If you oh, go, so I gotta have Half Life Two first. Well. Oh, look at that! It's like Inception. I don't think so. <laughs> oh yes, you will. Yes, you will. Um, to play <laughs> Source, you will need Half Life Two and Steam installed and working. Hey man, I don't have Half Life Two on PC. Well, uh, you, you, yes, there's some some people just think you have to download a tool and then you'll get it, like on uh, Steam. You How much is Half Life Two? Turn into it, that game's or... old. It can't be that that much money. It depends what version of Half Life Two the motto. <laughs> I'm gonna go to uh, and find out in Steam. I'm sorry, guys. I know we don't normally do this. Yeah, Half Life Two is only five dollars. Hey, that's too much money. I want it for two two dollars and twelve cents. I think I have that somewhere. The actual disc of that. I had the orange box for Xbox 360 way back in the day. That's I got the that on PS3. That's awesome, man. That was the first time I saw a Portal. My mind exploded. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. I was looking through the wall. I was like, "What's going on here?" Oh shit! I, I got a good game. Here's another one. It's called Speedrunners. That one's like all competitive, free for all. It's like it's like a 2D platform. Two guys. I've have, seen that. That game looks that? like fun, actually. You guys, yeah. Are you guys up for that one? Cause I have that one. That that sounds fun. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's actually really fun. Actually. Where is it? Uh, let's see if I have it. Uh, I got it on Humble Bundle. It was only like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually fun. So let's see. All and of us are googling this right now, aren't we? Yes. yes. Is that <laughs> which one is this? Is that the one with the the, the one with, like, they're jousting or whatever? Or no, the swords? What's that one game where there's two sides and they're going towards each other and you do the sword and, like, you take one out and you keep, you have to keep going all the way to oh, the Oh, that's end. got that crazy name. It's, like, Namaste or something. Like, it's, like, a... 
That one's so funny because like there's two colors for two different people, and like they're like stick figure characters, whatever, with knives or swords. And then you take out the other person. One person has to get all the way to left. Your scroll all the way to left. The other person has to scroll all the way to right. So you you have to take out the one person. You have to keep going to the right side or the left side. Oh man, I forgot the name of that. Once I figure Peter out, Runners is available for six dollars. That's yeah, it's on sale. There's a four pack. Uh, four dollars. All right, I, I think maybe we should, like, think about this more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, all right, well, so we'll move me. on, but let's keep this in mind. Hey, let's listen, maybe we'll talk about it in the post-show. This all year, right. I'm posting this real quick just for you guys uh, to see. Everything I just posted here is all free to play on the PS3. Check that out. Bam! But let's continue. Free to play, and then how much you got to pay to get, get, like, all the stuff that lets you win. I know, right? <laughs> he's supposed to be able to win on. He's supposed to be able to win on skill alone. I'll show, I'll show uh-huh. you, Mr. Rabbit. Normally, games are pretty much free to play. Usually means pay to win. Yeah, right. That's that, definitely. This is a shooter, and I don't even have a gun. <laughs> that type of situation. <laughs> Going their fists. Like right, that attack so, and revolution. The next uh, topic. <laughs> the next topic we're going to talk about today, guys, is the Last of Us discount. Now a lot of a lot of the people out there already know the Last of Us remaster was announced. It's coming out next month on July 29th. It was announced previously at full 59.99, and uh, they just Naughty Dog just announced a price reduction of 49.99. Sweet. So uh, that includes all the DLC, all the multiplayer maps, the Last of Us, um, the the DLC with Ellie. I'm trying to try, left behind, which is actually really good. And it's got 49- all the DLC for. All the multiplayer yeah, yeah, yeah. DLC, yes, all the multiplayer DLC, all the uh, Left Behind DLC. It has um, Troy Baker, and I'm trying to remember the, the young lady's name. It has um, audio commentaries during the cutscenes, and you're able to engage during gameplay. And um, it has some other type of documentary on there, too, for $49.99. And uh, a lot of people were, were upset because a lot of what? people... Why? Were, too high? Still too no, high? No, pe- People had pre-ordered the game and paid full price, and Sony had came out and they said, "Hey, when you when you make a pre-order, there is fine print that you don't re- you haven't read. It says that you can't get refunds in situations like this." What do you mean, like the digital pre-order on the? Yeah, they paid the whole, the, Well, don't the, do that. That's yes. a silly idea. What if you're, the game you pre-order gets canceled? Well, I guess in a situation like that, you probably could get a refund, but uh, in this situation, says, the price. It says right in the corner, like if you order this, there are no refunds. It says right, like you don't have to even read the fine print. It says right on the cover art. And that's the thing. A lot of people were really upset about it, and, and Sony stuck to their guns, and they well, said no. Pre-order we're not off a digital copy. Like, why would you even do that? Why would you pre-order the digital copy of a game? I don't understand the. Like, the only reason I would pre-order is because I'm worried that they're not going to have enough copies at Best Buy or GameStop to satisfy everybody. So I would pre-order. Well, why somebody- would you pre-order a digital copy? Because if you don't buy it now, you're going to spend that 60 bucks on Cheetos and beer. Well, no, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I, I don't drink beer. But it's like you're looking into my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think Sony, like, if they had that policy, it's whatever. I think that the, what they really screwed up on is not giving a time limit for the developers to say when the price is. So, like, you should, only, you should have up to, like, a month before like a month before the release, you should definitely say what the final price is. You should not change it or announce it later on, and that was the problem. They were indecisive. They announced it later on. You don't but do that. This, uh, this, no, no. this I, is I'm baloney, long- man. This is ridiculous. How are you going to get upset? Well, you pre-ordered a digital product. I didn't, this, yeah. You're upset because you're a moron. But the thing is, uh, oh, Naughty cool. Dog, they came out <laughs> nine hours ago, and they uh, undermined what Sony said, and they said they want to give everybody back their $10 and it can go to your PSN account, and um, so they didn't. Sony did uh, make a statement saying that within the next seven days, uh, that ten dollars will hit your PlayStation Network. Account. Well, that's nice of Sony, I think. So, well, not Naughty Dog upset? actually. No, I, I wouldn't think so. That's where they wanted it to go initially. Oh, okay. Sony, Sony said no, but Naughty Dog said they wanted to give people back their money to uh, keep this pristine image. I would guess, and so now Sony's going to give everybody back their ten bucks within the next seven days. Good. Good. Uh, I don't get this one. I don't get. Sometimes the internet gets upset about stuff. I, I just don't understand. Man, I understand why they're upset. But I think that it's. I don't know. I, I think that Sony should change policy right now just to do 
the lowest price guaranteed, just like Amazon, everyone else does, so that you don't, you never pay the most expensive. The end, case closed. That's it. And you don't. And here's the thing: you shouldn't charge your card until the preload. Because now that you do preloading, you shouldn't charge your card until preload. You wouldn't have this problem either. Because also someone, reasonable. I like that. If someone idea. does that, you shouldn't charge them until then. So then, with the price change, you just charge whatever the price is at that moment. The yeah. end. But here's the <laughs> tip: like, don't pre-order digital pro. I don't like that. Doesn't even make yeah. sense. Why would you do that? Because there's a lot of people, especially now with the the preloading that they're trying to do. That's but why that, a lot of people. Then order it when you're about to preload it. Like, why yeah. why would you give Sony but, sixty dollars for weeks, like without getting no the product? I have no idea. Like, I only do that if I'm going to get that physical copy or <laughs> something. Cause, yeah, or, yeah. like, if it's, like, there's some kind of, like, DLC that you get. Yeah, like, yeah, I, like, I already so, pre-ordered Advanced yeah. Warfare because I wanted the Ghost DLC. But Sony does have <laughs> some incentives, though, for pre, pre-orders pre for uh, through digital, too. So I don't know what it, the incentive was for this one, but I know they usually have stuff for it as well. You actually get the digital copy like the digital DLC or digital like something extra, but I don't know what it is. But I know this they one mystifies this. me. I, I just can't understand doing that. Uh, that doesn't make uh, any sense to me. That's crazy. Uh, That's crazy. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this shit done fucked Mr. Rabbit up. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Briar, it seems to have come kind of as a surprise to you that The Last of Us Remastered had, had all this extra stuff. That's why yeah, I... I right. I haven't bought any of the map packs or anything playing the PS3 version because I know on the 29th of next month, everything that was ever released for it, including the newest multiplayer DLC, will all be included. Do you think that's a good value at $49.99? Yeah. No I think it's a great value. Okay, I think it's a bad choice on your part because you practice all this stuff for maps, and then they're going to show a whole bunch of different maps. You're going to get schooled again. See? Yeah, you yeah. I don't care, man. <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> Teach me. I'll get school. You know, I, I, lose, I lose in that game quite a bit. I mean, I'm really good. I, well, I consider myself pretty good now. But there are games where I get completely owned, but I'm having so much fun even losing. The game is phenomenal, man. I love that damn game. It's. We're going to skip the next topic, too, by the way, gentlemen. We're going <laughs> to skip it? What's the next one? The one you put oh, in there. Oh, Gamer is an addict. That's what actually you're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are talking about the price drop. I, I went to my Best Buy and, like, looking online. Ours is still 70 bucks. Oh, really? Uh, it, it, yeah. it, 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 I, I know Canada still uses horse and buggies for, like, news, but, like, come on. <laughs> like, uh, it's, if they're going to drop it there, might as well drop it here, right? Because Evolve well, is 60 bucks. Why can't... Uh, Last of Us be 60. Well, they're trying to stay consistent here, Unreal Gamers, so more than likely they'll release it to you guys for 85 with a one <laughs> multiplayer map. <laughs> no Canada. No. I was disappointed, though, but I'm still going to get it. Don't get me wrong. They re- you really convinced me, Beastly. <laughs> the thing is, though, that I wonder, like, if they're saying all this to happen because Amazon had it listed first. For forty nine ninety nine, and they had it listed for forty nine ninety nine with seventeen percent off discount. It wasn't that it was supposed to be that. It said seventeen percent off, and then after they listed that, other people jumped on board, and then all of a sudden, I went back to Amazon, and it went from seventeen percent off to like that's the actual price now. So to me, I'm questioning like if they really originally planned to do it, or they saw that Amazon was selling it cheaper first, and they switched it because Amazon had that for seventeen percent off. That's what I saw, so <laughs> I don't know. That's I. Th- I was wondering like why Amazon had it first, and then that's when. So, cause remember, Sony's site was the last site to change it. Sony was there a lot of pressure on them to change that price? Like, were people really upset that it was going to cost sixty dollars? This is it's the same fervor that you you get when uh, these games are rehashed for the PS4. It's the same thing that happened with uh, you know Tomb Raider. It's the same thing that happens with all these games that get re-released uh, for the PS4. People don't want to pay full price. For the game all over again, and there is a vocal minority that will go, you know, above and beyond to voice their opinion that, hey, look, I already paid full price for this game, and that's one thing—a full price game should be sixty dollars. Give me some form of discount. And, we and are. We're giving you all the DLC for free. The, well, that's the thing. Uh, upgrading the graphics. You can't reason. With un- you can't reason with unreasonable people, and some people are unreasonable. To me, that alone, all the stuff that you get. You get basically everything that was ever released for the game for sixty bucks. I thought that was a steal, but the fact that they're making it even easier, you know, to, to pay for it by giving you ten dollars off. I don't know. 
money has different value to different people too. You know, sometimes some people sixty dollars is like, you know, not a big deal. Other people have to save for three weeks to buy a sixty dollar game. See, so, you know, I mean, for Tomb Raider though, I felt like, like literally, we're paying the extra sixty bucks again for Lara Croft's like Botox because like yeah. that's what it was. Her face is completely changed. <laughs> that's all I saw. That's only different. I mean, it looked great, but at the same time, like. That one, the multiplayer sucked for that game, so it really wasn't like you're paying for to play multiplayer. You're just paying to play the same game over again. So at least yeah. The Last of Us has a multiplayer that a lot of people play, a community that plays that. So you're you're playing to play that again on a PlayStation Four. So now you have like a better uh, service, I think, for the the internet's a lot better. Like the the party chat, all that stuff works better on PS Four, in my opinion, than PS Three. And I think that's what you're paying for that experience to do that online. Like, I'm not. Paying to play the story. I'm sorry. I'm paying to play multiplayer. And but everybody just, has a mic. This is going to be fucking awesome. Nobody has mics on PS4. I mean, they, they got yeah, Apple. They, got, they don't use they got them. mics, but they're just bad mics. Okay? They don't use them, though. Like, nobody uses mics on the PlayStation 4. 4. It's like, I can't believe it. It came with a mic. It's so easy. You can hook up an iPhone headset to the controller, and nobody uses mics on the PlayStation 4. My what? mic broke already. The one that they gave me. Mine is down underneath the TV somewhere, but I forgot that people don't talk on the PS4. I haven't turned on my PS4 since I've been playing the last time I was on PS3. Do people talk on the PS3? <laughs> Nobody talks on the PS3 because, I mean... Oh, shit. Yes, they do. Yeah, really? On the last of us, in every game you're in, people are talking. You have to be able oh, to communicate good. in the game. Awesome. I mean, you have to be able to communicate. And, I mean, I've never in my life played a game. I know this probably doesn't even make that much of a difference, but I've never played a game online that had so many females playing it. The girls love to play this game. I can't believe it. Every game you go into, you got two or three girls talking shit and owning people. And it's not like... You know, Call of Duty, you got one out of every 20 games you got a chick in. And here, she's getting here. harassed. Yeah, and she's getting, yeah. What's up, Quite, baby? Come over, come over here sure and sit down. Are you sure it's girls or they're just they're their voice didn't girls. change yet? No, I'm just saying, they're, maybe their voice didn't change yet. <laughs> no, really they're not eight-year-old boys, okay? These are, these are ladies. And um, the, the fact is, they love playing this game. I actually was talking to, um, I was in a group last night with three girls just in one party with me. And I was asking them what was the draw to this game over games like Call of Duty, and they were, they basically said the same thing I said. There's so much more to it, and the girls are always playing it. So I'm really excited to see what happens well, on the PS4. I'm pretty sure The Last of Us also combines people who have mics, though. They try to match people with, with mics. Oh, really? Oh, no, no. Lots of times you're in uh, you know, groups where people, they don't have their mics even on. But see, I'm so vocal. You guys know how I am. I'll talk, hey, quit being a fucking idiot and help your teammate out, okay? And I'll get into it. And then they'll turn their mic on, hey, fuck you, dude. Like, well, help your buddy out. You're supposed to be... And then they plug their stuff up and turn it on. But lots of or, times, people won't, they won't have them on until they actually, you know, get into a or, conversation. Or they, click, or they click mute. As soon as you talk, they're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mute the whole party. I used to be like that beastly in uh, Call of Duty. I used to play a lot more Domination than I do now, and I used to like be like really like talking to my teammates because I, I figured... That was the only way I was really gonna get these guys to work together. Like, if you got like, if you formed a community out of the team that you're gonna play with for the next, you know, maybe it'll be ten minutes, maybe it'll be an hour, and you get people talking, you know, you can actually have a good time with people you've never met. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But a lot of times, what frustrated me was you get people in there that were just jerks. You know, they they weren't interested in playing the game. They were interested in, you know, pissing people off. The trolls, right? You know, so it just like I ended up kind of moving on from domination to games where I could just kind of lone wolf it, and I didn't have to worry about trying to motivate a team. It's going to be uh, different. I, I feel like Last of Us uh, might have, like, a more mature community to yes. it. You know, it's I not a lot of 12-year-olds. Next month, when you play this game, we're going to have this conversation again. The, the community, you promise? The whole, what are you going to give promise. me if you're wrong? <laughs> uh, my, my presence. Um, yeah, but <laughs> when, when, you, when you talk to people in, in, in this game, and you have that, you know, I guess you build an infrastructure... And you're you're letting people know, you know, at the start of the game, hey, look, we need to stick together. In the middle of the game, when things start maybe not going your way, you say, hey, look, everybody's far apart. We need to all come together. We're going to lose. And then you see people listening, and then they're kind of taking, you know, your your word as commander in chief of the game. And Even if they're not talking out. back, they're hearing it. Yeah, they hear. I mean, and when you mark a mark an enemy, and there's someplace else, and nobody sees them, and then you say, "Hey, look, there's somebody coming from behind," and you see everybody around you turn around and look. That feeling is just great, man. Fuck calling yeah. people. Well, this, you get the same feeling in domination. You just you, 
you know, you got to work it yeah. though. You got to you got to work at it. You can't just expect a team to be I've a never, team. You have to make never it. Never played team. domination. I've never played domination in my life. What? Other really? than in the other than in the, in the bedroom, but I've never played. In the ah. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Beast of the Gamer be dominating. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's how I feel about that game. It's awesome, and, and the communication is great. I can't wait for you, Unreal. I know you want to play it, man. It's We're all going to, I promise you, man, when that comes out on PS4, everybody here is going to be playing nothing but that online. You mark my words. Especially, uh, Brian Rabbit, you never played it. You're not going to play nothing but that game, guaranteed. For summer, and then until September comes, I'm playing Destiny. Yeah, yeah Destiny, well, when Destiny yeah. comes, <laughs> when Destiny <laughs> comes, <laughs> look, look, I felt so stupid watching you guys play Destiny, all the videos and stuff. I was like, oh, God, this game looks so fun. I'll be playing it, too. Uh, I'm just sure. saying, though, once Destiny comes, like, that's going to get dust on that, that disc. I'm like, that, sorry, you're gone. Like... <laughs> I don't know, man. You might feel a little different. I feel like right now. I, play, I mean, I play the multiplayer. I like the multiplayer for that. It's it's a lot of planning. So there's so many traps you can set up for people to so pick up, oh, so they can man. try to pick up things and you shoot them. Yo, I set up yeah. traps all the time, dude. That's the, the mean, number one best thing. I'll run into a group of people with a with a machete and swing the machete once and then drop a nail bomb and continue to swing. They'll all rush me and try to attack and then all of a sudden it explodes and they all hit the ground. I might have died and sacrificed myself, but I took one for the team and killed four four enemies. Awesome. The one thing I like that there's a lot of, there's a lot of glitches though that people use to for their advantage online though. Like if you're in the edge of the building, you could do a screen shift glitch. So like you shift the screen so you can see it completely around the screen. You can see completely around it, your ledge. Really? That's why for third person shooters, man, you gotta watch out because they don't align the screen right. You can move the camera and like you're you on the, the edge of the weapon. You need to teach me this. Not I will to teach you this, sir. I will teach you this. Thank you. It's, really not, it's not that hard. It's just you're shifting the camera, and you keep leaning against the wall. It makes it shift slightly. Then you can see around the, the, the whole bend, and you know exactly where people are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, when you get there, you just basically, if there's someone on the other side of the wall, you can move your camera all the way around and see them. Yeah, I do that all the time. No, see, I meant, like, next. shift and move the whole camera. If you keep doing that against a wall, it'll shift and rotate. Like, you won't even be in screen anymore. The camera will be away from you. Your oh, wow. character. That's what I'm saying. So you can say the full view of the, what's around you. I'll you teach, teach you some me, stuff. Teach though. me the magic. <laughs> so not, <laughs> not too dirty. Not too dirty. It's been a week since the uh, Destiny Alpha. You still am for that game. I can hear it in your voice when you talk about it. Itching. Like I, I feel like <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I feel like that to me is I don't even know what I'm excited for. The multiplayer, like the P versus P or P versus E. Like I don't know what I'm excited for for that game because. I, I think I'm going to be excited for both. Like, this is a game that it's funny because you know how, like, Call of Duty comes out, people jump straight into the multiplayer. It's mm -hmm. not going to help you if you jump straight into PvP in this one. you got to go and level up your guy. you got to level up, get better weapons to go to PvP. So you could go ahead and wow. jump into that. But, but you, they'll give you weapons if you just play PvP. So if, very you just, if you're not interested in it at all, you yeah. can do it. You, I mean, if you want to. It's a lot yeah, slower. You, you yeah. need to find some. Plus, you you have a better chance of just finding something out there. You know, I mean, you might find like a, a, a rare weapon just doing like the you know the whole P versus E thing, and that's what it's all about for me. Like that's so, awesome. Is it similar to like Borderlands? I mean, do they have that type of yes. that infrastructure as far as weapons and stuff? I keep talking about like if you ever played a game called Defiance. Which, by the way, the TV show's back, and the first episode was awesome. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just say, just throw it out there. But uh, yeah, that 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 game, it's it's like exactly the same game. The weapons, everything is there. It's just this one actually looks good. The other one didn't run too well, and that one was like MMO style. But uh, this one is very similar to that. You could collect weapons, and you could jump straight into like a multiplayer match, and that that's a little that's closed off though. That actually you bring it brings you into like an actual map level, and it, it's pretty cool. But the the difference between that is that you level up your character, you level up the weapons in the in the real world, and you can bring it to the the multiplayer. All your weapons and everything right there, and you can awesome. switch things on the fly. So that to me that's that's what separates it. You know, it's not like they separate the multiplayer and the the, the story campaign. They put it together. So. And the gameplay is deep. Like the uh, the more I played of the multiplayer, kind of the more I was learning, the better I was doing, and bringing it was exciting. 
to go into the single player, find an awesome new weapon, and be like, oh, I can't wait to bring this into multiplayer. Yeah. I'm going to totally dominate these bitches. Yeah. And, like, you bring it in, and you're like, yeah, this is fucking fun. And you get, and then once you have that awesome weapon, you can even upgrade that weapon. You know, yeah. like, you get more damage or better scopes or whatever by playing with it. It's, I mean, it's great. It's fun. It's The shooting just feels so tight, too. It's like I, that uh, Halo shooting, but even tighter. I, the only thing I'm worried about, it's, like, a lot of people are not familiar with, like, MMO games or like certain RPG games. So like I'm kind of worried if people are just the shooters that they're not going to understand once they go to the real game, there's going to be some repetitive motion. Like they're going to be sent to, to go on the quest and you have to go do this and then come back to get points. I don't think a lot of them are used to that. So like I'm worried that they're going to be like, oh, this, this is annoying. It's repetitive. But they really don't understand that that's how you do things. That's how you do MMOs. That's a quest. You go on the quest, you get you, you get have rewarded to grind. for what you do. You know, that's, you what, that's what happens. And, of course, with this, hopefully – the thing they'll counteract that is that you're going with groups. You're going with the faction. Like, you'll have your people with you. Which, by the way, I heard they might raise it higher, by Good. the way. They're, they're talking about – I saw Angry Joe, like, interviewed a guy, and he said, like, they're trying to do it higher. They also have raids, which is another thing that – I don't know if you're familiar with raids. Like, they have – that's one It's like, an MMO. It's, like, massive amount of people attacking, like, a large monster or a large creature. They're going to have like, – They also have, like, kind of random instances – I, you know that big crab tank monster? They had one of those drop in that like kind yeah. of free roaming area, and like yeah. anybody who was around could just start fighting it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's I think that's gonna be their style of raids. But if you ever played Defiance, they had like something called the uh, uh, what was it? Hellbugs, and like there'll be giant hellbugs, and like they literally have like hundreds and hundreds of people fighting them at the same time, which is pretty cool. So that's hopefully awesome. they do something similar to that. But yeah, I'm okay. you know the game's got so much to offer. If you don't like one aspect of it, just don't play that part. Oh, they're also going to have, like, a clan system, too. They already said that. They're going to do clans Get and all out. that stuff. Yeah, that's oh, why... we're totally Andrew... starting the Beastly Thoughts clan. Yeah. Oh, Angry, <laughs> uh, Angry Joe asked them that, and that's the first thing they said. They're going to have, like, a clan system. I forgot what they call it specifically, but that's their clan system and everything, so... Oh, that's and you, not only do you have clans, you can have a clan within a clan. You can separate them. Like, these are, the, these are the snipers, these are the elites, and you can separate your clans into subgroups. Like subdivisions too. Awesome. So we so, could have like Yankee fans over here, Red Sox yeah. fans like separated <laughs> over here. That's like the perfect world I've always dreamed of. <laughs> so I, thought, I thought that's pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Totally want to start the Beastly Thoughts clan, man. That's gonna be great. Sounds good to me, man. Yeah, I watched the video that. Go continue, no. sir. Continue. No, you have to go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Burr, I saw the video you did about um about this game and, and basically saying, asking, was it the Call of Duty killer? Yeah. I, I, that really kind of touched me because I know how um, how Call of Duty is for you. It really resonates with you. You've been playing it for so many years. And it was so sincere. And I was watching everybody's videos of Destiny and how much everybody's really enjoying this game. Now, if you had to, just based on the alpha that you played and your initial thoughts of Titanfall, because a lot of people thought that Titanfall was a Call of Duty killer. Mm -hmm. initially, before the game was really, it came out and was heavily experienced. Do you feel kind of the same way uh, about Destiny that you did when Titanfall first arrived on the scene, or is this something totally different for you? Do you feel like this is a different experience overall, and this really does have, you know, the, the kind of tale that could, you know, give this, you know, a, a fighting chance to be the Call of Duty killer versus something like Titanfall that everybody thought was going to be? The, the most excited I've ever been for a game that hadn't been released yet was for Halo 2, because I had so much fun playing Halo, and it took years for Halo 2 to come out. And they kept talking about it, and they kept talking about, like, the online multiplayer, which, you know, there's just so much to it, right? And I was so excited. This, I'm, I'm right there right now with Destiny. Like, I am... I can't wait to get this game in my hands. Wow. The the alpha, you know, I I was like zero interest level for this game. You know, I, like it was made by Bungie, so there's some interest there, but it was a totally new IP, and I don't like MMOs, so I don't know how I'm gonna like this game. They weren't talking about it like in good ways to me, but mm -hmm. once I got it in my hands and I checked it out, like there's just so much content and so many ways to play the game, and they all kind of mesh together. So like if you're just do if all you want to do is raids and missions, then you can do that. If all you want to do is just kind of explore this vast wilderness, you can do that. If all you want to play is play PvP, you can do that. And that's the 
biggest problem with Titanfall. If you ask me, they did not include a single player, so they did not get people who weren't interested in, in multiplayer, right? So, like, Call of Duty every year sells, you know, millions of copies, and, like, 80%, 70% of the people who buy it never even play the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Titanfall got those 30%, right? The 30% mm-hmm. left over. No, no single player means that people who aren't interested in multiplayer aren't going to buy the game, so they'll never get sucked into it, right? They'll never say, oh, I'm having a really good time with this single player. Maybe I'll just check out the play, the multiplayer just to see how it feels. Destiny, you get to keep all the shit that you earn in single player and bring it right over to multiplayer. That's like that's the most brilliant fucking idea I've ever heard. See, uh, I'm going to take it a step further. I don't just think it's going to be the Call of Duty killer. I think this is going to be the way... This might lead the way that first-person shooters will move in, in the future. That mm. this will be the way that now for single-player campaign, it means something. It's not just a quick story, and that's why they're only five hours, six hours, because there's only so much you can do with first-person shooter with stories. And that's why this may be a way to change it, to, to change a way that you can still have those shooters. You can still be separated and do those, the, what you like to do, like Halo style or whatever style you want to do. You can still do that, but yet they're also going to incorporate people that like to play single-player, the people that like to play co-op. You can do whatever you want. I think that this might be the way first person shooters will move in the future. I think this is this will show like the new way of first person shooter. Cuz people kept wondering like cuz first person shooters are they dying out? What's going to be the thing that's going to spark them back? I think this is it. This is not just a first person shooter. You can't even categorize it just as that. No, it's you know so I mean? much more. It's, it's so much more. So like, I think this will be the future of first person shooter. That's just my opinion. Do you guys remember the game back when the Xbox 360 first came out? I think a Korean developer was developing a game that kind of promised to be something similar to this. Was it called Harkin or Hawken? I don't know if it ever came out, or it definitely never came out in the U.S., but it was basically going to be a futuristic first-person shooter, but in like kind of an MMO environment. You guys remember that at all? Hawken is that. Um, that's the... I think it's talking about Hawken. Hawken's a mech warrior thing. Yeah, hardly, maybe. I, it, it was it named like after a person. Mask. It had a mask on the cover, and it had, like, the half of his glasses broken it off. It never came out. I don't think it ever came out. I don't think there was ever a cover. If they were developing mm. it. I think a Korean developer was developing it. And, it, like, I was, I was in for it, but it just never got came out. Mm. This is, to me, I mean, it's like it's a really compelling idea. Well, it, sounds like, it sounds like it's going to change the world. Yeah. Well, but we get all, exoskeletons all- in Call of Duty this year, so. Well, I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, until we get like a, a beta, or, or you know, an alpha for that, I don't know. I mean, it's Call of Duty. It's, a lot of people are down on Call of Duty right now, and just the excitement and the fervor over Destiny seems like it's unstoppable. Just from the, you know, the little bit of gameplay that you guys had got me super amped to play that game. But, and Call, and Call of Duty is Call of Duty, and I, unless they totally change, which of course they change the visual aesthetic of the game. Let's say they're able to, to change the paradigm of the way the game is played. It'll just be more Call of Duty, so we just gotta wait and see. Sorry, right. I can't I can't stand that the jump in Call of Duty. I, I keep saying it. I keep saying it. I feel like you're like Super Mario, like jumping up and down and <laughs> floating there. Like that you would get me really jump. excited about Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mario <laughs> Cross Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. seriously, you get the <laughs> <laughs> Digital pre-order day one. Fireballs, dude! Shoot fireballs at people. Get the you get the magic star. Yo, yeah, Yoshi spitting eggs all over the place. It was a hellscape, man. It was a nightmare. <laughs> FPS Mario would be like the best game in the world. Hell yeah! And, and don't give him any ideas, not too nerdy, because you won't get any credit for it. Imagine a person, a first player online Mario game. You can run around, throw fireballs at people, and jump and do that. Stomp that, 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 that should be awesome. That uh, exoskeleton Yoshi, though. <laughs> you got the Mario Karts for uh, like instead of tanks in Battlefield 4 you got the Mario Karts for Ultimate Press I am 100% on board with this game I think we're brilliant <laughs> you gotta watch out for those blue shells man they kill anything though yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, gotta, you, you gotta get a 25 kill streak to earn one <laughs> that would be fucking sick stop it you guys are making me want this damn game stop it <laughs> This is not right, shit. No, seriously, oh, think about it. You could, like, automatically kill the person that has the most kills just with that blue shell, that lightning. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that would be so annoying. You're, like, you're, like, on a 24-kill streak. You're yeah. about to get... Yeah. <laughs> boom. 
boom. <laughs> you just hear like lightning strike. It's like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get struck by lightning bolt. That'd be awesome. It's totally gotta have like the two completely different graphics too. It's like the Call of Duty graphics and the Mario graphics completely like intertwined. Absolutely. That'd be so much fun. You just got Mario and the Call of Duty guy running around shooting each other. Special DLC includes Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong. <laughs> yes, yes. No, it, had, it, it had to be Cranky Kong. That's what Nintendo's pushing on now. It had to be Cranky no, Kong. No, that's that's their special DLC. That, yeah. that's their, they're going to announce that one in XE3. You don't even know that. Cranky Kong like, whips out his cane, and he's got a sword in there. He's like, sling! <laughs> I'm in. Make this game happen. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Nintendo, so many good ideas here, Nintendo. Just listen to us. Listen to us, Dan. Well, yeah. the, the next topic talks about, it says Xbox One versus PS4. Yeah. We have, we have to include Wii U in there, too. I'm sorry. It has to, Wii U has to be in there. The reason why I include Wii U is because Xbox One still didn't pass Wii U sales. So how are they not going to be mentioned, Wii U? You know what I mean? The Xbox One still has not surpassed Wii U sales, and they're, they're still like 2 million, maybe even more by now, ahead of the Xbox One. So, I, I understand. I understand what, you, what you're saying, not to nerdy, but this topic is actually referring to the exclusives and the games that are available right now, son. That's what this is about. Uh, well, if uh, you're talking about exclusives, then in that Nintendo too, aren't all their games exclusive? No, this is this list was only for 2014. I, I, I um. Oh, okay, I was just about to see you go. <laughs> I, I did a video on this, and uh, and Briar saw the video, and he wanted to kind of go over it a little bit. Basically, uh, PlayStation and Microsoft have compiled their list of games that are available as of right now for 2014 only, so this does not include the uh, release games. And so I went over this list, and I detailed it in the video. If you guys haven't seen it, go to my page and check it out. Um, and basically, the numbers were kind of startling. Let, now let me... So Microsoft, the... I'm just reading your notes here. Microsoft has 23 games available right now, and for Sony has 47. Yes. That's a big difference. Yes. That's is. double. Wait, the, what people are going to say, the first thing people are going to ask, how many are indie games for each? Uh, like, how many are actual, like, full retail games? Because that's what the first thing people are going to ask. Well, you that's can, exactly I, you can, what they're going to ask. You can click on the links. Uh, Sony has uh, considerably more retail games. Uh, they do have more indies as well, but they do have more retail games and games that are made specifically for the, that console. Um, and uh, the thing, the thing that kind of took me by surprise is the number of, of exclusives. Microsoft has five exclusives available right now that have been released in 2014, and I think Sony has seven, 18, 18 exclusives. Those are games that have already been released. These are all released as of so, right but now. For Sony, you're also including the indie games, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Microsoft has five indie, I mean, uh, exclusives, and Sony has. 18 exclusives, and they both... Right. They, I can count more than five for Microsoft. Uh, well, you want to... We got Forza, we got Dead might, Rising. No, Forza and Dead Rising were released in 2013, Mr. Rabbit. This is for 2014. Oh, 2014. oh okay, I see what you're saying. Well, what and about so the new we, Forza and yeah, the new Dead Rising? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. so this is a weird list because... So we're starting the year at January. Okay, I see what you're saying. But most and, games and, are released at the if, end of the year. If, if you click on the link, all the end, all the like, if you click on this link here, it'll show you, and all the games that are exclusives are actually in bold print. All right, so I'm looking at it right now. Um, for yeah, so we have, so like Sony does have a lot. Mm -hmm. The only thing is though, like like you're like caught in between. Like, are we looking at just the ones that are not going to be like indie games because we're not yeah. looking at indie games. It's a last of remastered, right? Drive Club. Uh, Don't Wolf Starve Wolf. isn't an exclusive. That's available for PC as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so no, that's why I'm looking at only like. But then again, if you're gonna say that Timefall too, like you can't. Yeah, <laughs> Time, Timefall is also. I mean, that's not one on their list, but that would have counted too for them. Well, because. well, they they actually specified up here. They're talking about console exclusives uh, above the actual okay. listing. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. So, so for the uh, for the Xbox One, I mean for PS4, the exclusives: Don't Starve, Basement Crawl, Dead Nation, Apocalypse Edition, Towerfall, 
uh, Steam World Dig, Infamous Second Son, Mercenary Kings, Final Fantasy uh, 14 Online, Backgammon Blitz, Octodad, Deadliest Catch, MLB 14 The Show, Sports Friends, Titan Attacks, Transistor, Sparkle 2, War Thunder, Pixel Junk Shooter, Ultimate, and Entwined. Those are all available right now. Exclusives for the PS4. Now, Xbox One, their exclusives are Titanfall, Connect Sports Rivals, Ninjutsu, Super Time Force, and Super Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha. And so, uh, think about how many of those are indies for the Xbox One. Two, hold on. Three, One, two. Four. I'm looking at the games. Five, six, seven. They have eight. They have so far. Hold on. I see eight games. They have eight games that are not indie games. They're they're going to be released that are either out or going to be out completely in 2014. That's like eight total that are not indie games. So like that's why I'm like I don't know because I think like people that are purely Microsoft will they'll bring that out at least they're bringing out full full release games because you gotta keep in mind even the Connect Sports game that's not an indie game even though it should be it's not an indie game that that's made by Rare that's studio. made that's an actual studio and same thing with uh what else well, I lost track of what I was saying uh like what else oh Shape Up technically would be another one but I didn't even include that so that's nine technically Sunset Overdrive Fantasia, another one, Dance Central, those are all exclusives that are, like, actual full retail. So, I don't know. That's that's why you're in between. I think, regardless, both, like, platforms are banking on third parties for the rest of the year. That's where the bread and butter is. They know they can't compete. There's so many games. I literally think that's why Batman pulled out and they're releasing the game, like, at a different time. I think they did it on purpose because of the fact that there's so many games released in October. That it almost oh, this is like a one day in October that's got like eight games coming out. Yeah, there's, it's almost suicidal to release a game during that time. Like, Sony's doing it. Every console is trying to do one game, but, like, it's suicidal. No one's going to buy the game unless they have your console. They're, no one's going to buy the, the game, the console, just to get that game because of that. Like, it's it's ridiculous what they did that. If you really think about it, like, I, the, what is it, uh... Bayonetta 2, I mm-hmm. think that's suicide for them to be released in October with everyone else. Um, and it's a shame because I think that's going to be a great game. And I just think it's going to get lost in the mix. You know, Drive Club is probably going to get lost in the mix. So is Forza Horizon 2. Like, I feel like those games will get lost in the mix. Yeah, they'll do decent, but they're not going to do as good as, good as they would have done if they, if they weren't released in October. I don't understand why they didn't release July or August. I know it's a slow time. But then you have all the time in the world because there's no games coming out. And, and you have the focus of the consumer. The, the consumer, hey, what's available? What's new? Exactly. And then they finally see that, hey, look, this is the only thing that's out. Who oh, heard about that? Rather than everything coming out at once, nobody can play all these games coming out in such a short window. So people are going to pick the, the number one, the biggest AAA title, or maybe the top two. And everything else will get left, you know, in the aftermath, and nobody will ever go back to it. And those will end up being the games that we talk about in the show. These games are awesome. I never got a chance to go play. You know why? Because we're playing something better. I just think I, I agree with you 100%. Because we're playing Destiny. The- <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. What happened? What do you say, Enro? Oh, I was going to say, why are they going to put it out at the end of the year if pretty much school next summer holidays is in like July and August? Why don't they start shooting them out? I know I understand Christmas, yeah, but like that many games. How many games can kids get for Christmas? Like three. A four? lot of kids are away at camp. Summer sales aren't as good as you would expect. You'd think that since kids have so much time to play, but they, they it's actually a really slow time for video game sales because most kids are at camp. They don't. They actually have less time. My kids go to camp for longer hours than they go to school, and when they come home, they're fucking exhausted. <laughs> so, I think it's easy like they really play. actually play less games, even though you'd think they have more time. I think it's seasonal too. More people stay home during that time, and uh, during summertime and all that stuff in the U.S. Especially, people leave. People yeah. like leave, and during that time, vacation, all the other stuff, and like the seasonal stuff. A lot, you know, the weather. You're gonna be stuck at home more often, so that's why they release at that time. On you're top, gonna be in the pool, and not in your living room. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's just sucks. Yeah. Like school starts, and then like all these awesome games come out, and you're like, where's yeah. the time to play them? Yeah. Until you get to uh, holiday season. Do you, guys, do you guys think that this 47 games available now and the 23 available now for these two major consoles is actually a deciding factor for people? Because a lot of people are like, it's about the games. 
right now there aren't any real games that are out on either system that I feel are absolute must-haves. Of course, you got some graphically intense games that can't show off the hardware, but I don't think that there is a, a definitive experience out right now for the PS4, the Xbox One, that people feel like they, they have to have. It's just something that if you didn't have the system, you'd have to buy it for. Do you think if people look and they see that there are 47 games for the PS4, including some pretty good AAA titles versus Xbox One's 23, that that would be a deciding factor, or do you think people will hold out for bigger titles? I think they're just going to depend if they want the AAA title. I think that right now Sony is banking on the AAA, and that's why if you saw everything, the whole conference was about if you get this here, you're going to get this first. Like they pull the Microsoft for a reason because they know that this more than ever, this October, it's going to be ridiculous with AAA titles, big ones, that like not just October, we're starting for September with Destiny. They're making sure that if people do buy this stuff, especially for holiday stuff like that, they're going to get it on PlayStation 4 because they're going to have the best version for it. That's what they're banking on. Is it smart? We'll see. You know what I mean? But I personally don't think it's smart to release any exclusives right now. They already got two, Drive Club, and then after Drive Club is uh, Little Big Planet 3. That's enough because if you put any other big name there at a time, it's going to get lost in the mix. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth because you're going to have bigger games. Like, it doesn't matter how big a game is. Like, I mean, I'm not saying Uncharted wouldn't sell more than Batman not like uh, Arkham Knight, but I'm I'm saying Arkham Knight it's a big name. That's why they delay. I was shocked they delayed. You see a company like that delay a game, they pulled out for a reason too. And I think because they know that they don't want people to they don't want to lose sales during that time. So I agree uh, with I agree with both of you guys. You know, I I think it's hard to explain why the PlayStation is four is better. Uh, but once you have it in your hands and you see all the indie games, there's just more to play on the PlayStation four right now. You know, I'm playing Entwined, and I'm loving Entwined. I've played a bunch of the indie games, even Resogun and stuff like that. I've had a good time with War Warframe. Uh, I know that you've been playing a lot of Not Too Nerdy. Like, there's just more of that kind of stuff on the PlayStation 4 right now. And there's going to be um, more. Like, in the... Go ahead. No, I'd say, like, to go on what you're saying, there's going to be even more coming up, like you're saying, yeah, the indie yeah. stuff. So, so I, you know, even though you can't point to, like, one big game that just defines the PlayStation 4 experience, once you bring it home, you'll see that there's just a ton of stuff to play. And I have both systems here, and I just turn on my PlayStation 4 more often because, you know, well, I have Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty, uh, and they both look a little bit better on the PlayStation 4 than they do on the Xbox One. They both play a little bit better, in my opinion, because the controller is better. Uh, but then there's also just a lot more indie games that are fun to play, and they only cost you know ten dollars, and a lot of them are free if you you know download them at the right on the right month if you have PlayStation Plus. I think that you know it's a compelling argument. It's not like a it's not like a mega mm -hmm. like it's not a mega factor to me. If you know if only one of these consoles was going to get Destiny or only one of these consoles was going to get Grand Theft Auto Five, then the choice would be clear. You know like. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to get the one that I want to play that game on, you know? Mm -hmm. But so far, there hasn't really been, like, a compelling argument one way or the other. Titanfall, I thought, was pretty compelling for the Xbox One. I played a lot of Titanfall. I understand that it doesn't have the legs of a Call of Duty, but I'm enjoying it anyway. Do you think uh, you could, it'll last for a year, just off subject? You think I you don't know. I, I feel like it's dying so quickly already. We, me and uh, we were trying the to community? get into... Yeah, we were trying to, me and 9to5Gamers played yesterday, and we were trying to get into a match on the new DLC, and we just couldn't. We just, it was a Saturday, and we couldn't get into a match on the with the new DLC. Wait, that's the Xbox One version? Back. That was the Xbox yeah. One version? And that version is dying out, too? I thought it was just a PC it felt version. Like it. Yeah, and Holy the matchmaking crap. is, like, clearly not very selective, because I, I'm a Gen 2, right? I'm, like, you know, like a prestige level 2 yeah. in that game. And I, I'm in a lobby with Gen 9. You know, so like that's that's Ooh. not you know that's not narrowing it down. I think they're just yeah. trying to get anybody who can get a good connection. And I got you could get up to a five bar connection. It like judges your level, your your internet connection. You get up to a five, and I'm anywhere from a two to a three bar playing that match with like Gen Nine. So I still kick their ass, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I still kick their ass. Like, that's awesome. This is it. Been so much better. <laughs> our agenda this week, but I want to still ask you guys about it. Um, a lot of developers now that the uh, Kinect has been taken out of you know the whole loop with the Xbox One are saying that they're getting very comparable uh, frame rates and uh, re you know resolution. To That's the great PS4, news. PS4 or the Xbox One. Um, I think it's awesome too uh, that actually the Xbox One and the PS4 are actually be able to stand head to head. Uh, 
we had we actually asked about this before. I asked not too nerdy. You, did, you didn't think that 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 that, uh, that would make that much of a difference in the past, there, sir. We and I still that? say that, and I'm still saying this right now. I'm gonna be dead honest, and I'm sorry to say it like this. I don't want to, because when I you set me up to sound like a fan, but when I'm not, I'm saying I'm saying points on this. No matter what you do, and here's the thing. I don't know if you saw this, because someone looked this up. Bill Spencer already admitted, like, he already admitted about the whole thing, that Direct X 12 is not going to make a huge difference. Yeah. I don't know if you, he already admitted that. Phil yeah. Spencer Ooh. from Microsoft. Head of Xbox. Yeah, head, head of, of Xbox. Xbox. Head, that's <laughs> don't get your hopes up, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's pretty much it. Like, you're not going to see the PlayStation has a better GPU, or APU, what they call it, but it has a better one. That's That's it. No matter how much you update it, if they update theirs too, it's still going to be faster. It's still going to look better. You're so still going to get more frames, more picture. It's up to the developer to develop it. More now, piece. they they might limit things. If you're talking about if they were optimizing for, for example, if they're playing optimize the PS4 as much as they can, and then they try to put that into the Xbox One, it's not going to run that the same frames. It's not going to be the same. The reason why they do that is because once again they're gonna have they're gonna once again program it for the weaker console and just put them together and that's it. They're gonna put less objects and stuff like that because well, that, that's so, good for us that the Xbox One is gonna be ten percent more powerful or however by deleting the Connect. But basically, yeah. what, you're, what you're saying is they're gonna dumb down the PS4 version of every game to make it more visually uh, comparable to the yeah, Xbox they're gonna, One. They're gonna have to. I mean, if you don't think companies do that? Ask Ubisoft. What happened to that magical uh, that uh, E3 settings? The E3 settings for Watch Dogs PC that they, yeah. the modders they found there. Yeah. And they yeah, just what unlocked. The fuck? They did that on purpose because why? Because the consoles had a deal. And then, no, it's not hidden. You could, they could try to deny as much as they want. The consoles had a, a deal. That's that's pretty much it. The consoles like, had did a deal. both consoles go to Ubisoft and say, hey, We'll pay you to make the PC version of this crap. Like I don't think they said we'll pay you. I think they said that if you make it too much of a gap, then you're they'll not, probably limit them certain separate. things. They'll lose. They'll limit like certain things with them, and they lose money like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's the thing. They have yeah. all the power. For I example, they, like, could, they could limit saying like I don't know. Like we won't allow DLC. We won't allow all this other stuff. And it, it limits the market share for that company on that platform. Well, if, if they went to Ubisoft and told them, hey, look, if, if it looks so much better on the PC, people probably won't buy as much on the home consoles. If you make the home consoles look as comparable to the PC, people are going to think that's the best. That's the cream of the crop, and everybody's going to buy it, you know, based on the visual aesthetic alone. So it was probably in their best interest. But Ubisoft came out yesterday, uh, and they said that, uh, that they, they basically hid away these graphical features because of stability issues. That uh, you know, of course, it does look a lot better when it's unlocked, and hackers shouldn't be doing what they're doing. But they said that running it optimized like that will give you hiccups in the system. Oh, it's one or two frames slower. Yeah. You proved it right. But here's yeah. the thing, though: when you when you patch that, you could patch one or two frames. Do not tell me you can't. That over time, you download patches, they'll fix it. I guarantee those monitors are gonna fix that to look ridiculous, and it's gonna be even easier for them to fix it because of that settings that they unlocked. So I know for a fact they did it on purpose. Because it even said E3 settings in the, in the code. Yeah, it, it even, literally says E3 it, settings. Like, that means that they purposely unlocked that. They purposely did it for a different reason. It doesn't matter what they say. And that's okay. what I'm trying to say. They'll do the same thing for consoles already. I can, I just, the way their the motivation, version. it just seems so bizarre. Like, what, how does it... I don't see how it helps you, Ubisoft to make... A worse version on the PC. I don't see how it helps them. Well, it helps them because right now the one that's making them the most money, it's console version. They're yeah. not making as much money on PC. So yeah, but everybody's trying... unhappy with the game. Huh? Everybody bought the game because they were expecting this like next gen experience. Okay. But, you know, it sold like gangbusters, right? It sold like yeah. four million copies in the first weekend. Yeah, yeah. and like PS3, right? PS4 sold 1.8 by itself. Yeah, but talk about the game to anybody who's got it, and they're like, eh. Sucks. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, well, all that enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, though, it's not like just because the game sucks that you, you give the money back. The, yeah. the developer gives the money back. They already made their money. Right, and, like, yeah, this exactly. Be a franchise already, so they'll make it. They'll improve on the things people don't like about it, and I guarantee people will still take their risk. The people that say it sucks. You think Watch Dogs 2 will be a success? I don't know. There's a lot I, of controversy I here. I think they will. 
I think they'll do it. But the they, only they thing have, is they have to, yeah. This they'll, they'll they'll optimize. But the thing is, like that that's the thing. I purposely think they did it on purpose. I think that <laughs> they brought down the resolution on purpose, right? Even if it's one or two frames, don't tell me that. You know how many times I release games that are hiccupy for PC and then they patch it in later? Don't tell me that yeah, one or two this, frames difference this is different than that. What was that? That this is different. I mean, that game was. Clearly, I mean, it's people just can unlock yeah. it and make a perfectly great... Yeah, looking, and the know, funny thing is, though, the game ran better than it did before for some people. For me, it was one or two, like, slower frames, but, like, it overall looked better and it feels better. I actually have Watch Dogs for PC. That's the thing that ran. As soon, that's the first thing. As soon as I found out the modder yeah. did it, I'm like, let me change that crap. Like, that's the first thing I did, and it works. And I can see that there's plenty of room for them to mod it. So, All right, so you've been it. bitten by this, then. Yes, you've that's... personally been bitten by this, and you'll buy Watch Dogs too. I bought that's what happened. I bought Watch Dogs. Remember, I got the Watch Dogs deal. I forgot what it was, like thirty one dollars yeah, or something. 30, 30, yeah. yeah, I got it like that for download. Right, I got it real cheap for PC. Okay, and then I also bought a PS4 version. Guess what? A PS4 version went. Never opened. It. I sold it to my cousin. Never yeah. opened it because of how the bad experience I had day one. Remember the UPlay thing that I was flipping out on? Yeah, yeah, that, I remember your video. Whole, yeah. The whole thing was a bad experience. I didn't even open the PlayStation 4 version. I said, this sucks. I'm not even going to play this. Like, and I, I, I stole that off. I'm in perfect agreement with you. The only thing I don't agree about is that people will buy Watch Dogs 2. They will. Like, they if, will. if Alien, what was Alien Colonial Marines 2 came out, I don't think anybody would buy it because they're but so... But Watch Dogs isn't that bad, Dave. It, you can't say Watch Dogs is even Watch in the Watch same Watch that bad. Colonial Marines? Marines? No, I, I agree with you there, but Ubisoft's Ubisoft's policy toward gamers, I think, is that bad. Oh, yeah. They but clearly I, pulled a fast one yeah, here. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what their motivation is, but they definitely did some super shady business here. They I, they tantalized us with those E3 three graphics, and then they took them away. Yeah. But they're still there. Like you can still get false those. advertising. Yeah. False advertising. Well, let let me actually, ask you a question. As a let gamer, I'm pissed. I didn't even buy the yeah. game, and I'm pissed. And I would not buy Watch Dogs too, just because I'm pissed about what they did here. Like, I, I see what Ubisoft did here, and I'm pissed. And, like, like, do I want to give hey. my money to a company that treats me like garbage? No, I don't. Hey, you, hey, you bought an Xbox One. You bought an Xbox One. Uh-huh, that's true. And I really do hate Windows 8, and it looks a lot like Windows 8. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, though, EA, EA, anyone, they do this all the time. And people say, I'm not buying their stuff. And the next thing happens, they buy it. That's a fact. Yeah. All of and I'll put the line, I will definitely not be buying. I'll, that's I'll guarantee shit. that. That's a but, bullshit game. But, but everybody same. here is going to buy Mass Effect, though. Everybody here is going to get the new Mass Effect, for sure. Uh, I think they so. Gotta, they got to prove it to me. I mean, if they release, if they keep releasing games that just are fucking broken on online, which they yeah. do time and time again, I'm going to stop buying their games. And Let I'm not buying Battlefield Hardline because they need to fix Battlefield 4, make it playable. I tried to play it this weekend with 9 to 5 gamers, oh. and the shit crashed on my PlayStation 4. It's a console version of the game. It should not be crashing to the dashboard. It should not. Uh, I'll tell you right now. It, I'm going to like not buy EA products, but when Battlefront comes out, I'm buying it day one. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> they already got me on that. Like, I'm pissed off you, EA. But I'm still who's gonna buy who's developing game. that? It's not Let nice. Me, let me ask you guys a question. Know. With this Watch Dogs debacle, right, if the PC uh, hackers, the modders, didn't find this, everything would be smooth sailing. It would it would have never even come up. It was going to find it. It was writing the code. Like, it literally it said E3 graphics it or something. It said E3 2012. <laughs> Here's my question. Do you guys think that it's possible that something similar is hidden in the PS4 version? Uh, Says what? No. No, because I, no, I think that the whole thing was they, they always show the PC version. That's all they showed. And then finally they finally slipped in the PlayStation 4 version and uh, the Xbox One. They, they did a bait and switch, like everyone said. They kept showing the PC version, and then they switched it around. So the PS4 and the Xbox One version were always gr graphically cracked compared to the PC. Yes, anyway. that was okay. their that was their version, and that's yeah, what they're that's trying to That's why they on. downgraded the, play, or the PC version. Mm -hmm. But I, I just don't understand their motivation there. Like it just seems stupid. I mean, I mean you know, I, I could I could see it now. You know, you got you got uh, representatives from Sony and micro, Microsoft telling them, "Hey, look, these new consoles are next generation. These are supposed to be the newest of the new. If people see Watch Dogs on the PC, 
and it looks twice as good as it does on, on the PS4, it's going to make our new technology, our new hardware look like shit, and we can't have that. And if people do that, if you show them that, they won't buy the game on, on our console, and you're going to lose money. So yeah. can you make the PC version look more comparable to the PS4, to the Xbox One version, so that everybody can be happy across the board? But they forgot to say, uh, have your developers delete those hidden files and definitely don't name yeah. it. I mean, every, Boy, do not open. <laughs> every, developer, <laughs> like a, every developer at some point or another does this. Um, what, first of all, going back to Watch Dogs, though, I hope you guys know that they, there's an article that said a hundred over it was like about a hundred thousand game like over a little over a hundred thousand Watch Dogs games were pirated on PC, hundred thousand. So mm -hmm. like that just shows like they're always getting pirated. So like that's another reason why consoles for them is gonna make more money than the actual PC mm -hmm. version. Plus people keep getting discounts and key codes and all that other stuff. But and Windows eight. Don't forget about Windows yeah. eight. But uh, <laughs> Destiny, the Destiny developer said exactly something that people didn't like either, which relates to this. They said that they're going to make sure that it runs great on the all platforms, which they're talking about PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One. When they're asking why is it not 60 frames per second, that's what they're asking. Yeah. That's what they said. And they said all platforms, and that's one of the, the common answers a lot of developers do. They try to make it, like, it's the same on out like the experience is the same on all platforms. That's actually what he was quoted saying. It has mm -hmm. the same experience on all platforms. So when they yeah. say it that way, you know why. Like that's mm. that's what they try to do. Did you notice that the frame rate was thirty frames per second when you were playing the alpha? I don't think it's I don't think it's locked thirty. I think it's like up and down. Yeah, because it I don't it felt fast enough to me that I never felt like the, the it's frame not, rate was slowing me down. I don't think it's locked. I think that That's a good sign. I don't think it's, so. I think it's like like infamous Second Son where it wasn't locked at 30 frames. And it goes up and down, and then mm -hmm. like later on they put a patch that you could lock it at 30 if you wanted to, or you could keep it like that. Yeah. So, but yeah. I wonder what it'll look like on the 360 and the PS3. Uh, it'll look the same experience. <laughs> That's what he said. It'll look like the same exact experience. He's I mean, it can't be. I've never seen a game look like that on the PS3 though. I mean, it's. Is it just going to be textures, or are they going to have pop in in the environment? Or I wonder. I just wonder what it'll look like. You know, in Titanfall, well, you know, it was the same game on the 360. It just ran choppier, and the graphics weren't as good. But it was the same game. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's cool to me that they're bringing it out for the PS3 and the 360 because all those gamers get a chance to play it. Mm -hmm. And they're being upfront. I don't like when companies lie to us, and I don't like when companies take our money and then abandon us and put out uh, put out DLC for sixty dollars when they haven't fixed the original game yet. Like that DLC, was he's yeah. talking about Mr. Hardline there. Yeah. To That's me, a crappy ass game, man. I'm sorry, I'm not I, impressed with that. It's fun. I, I it's, it's fun, but I feel like they tested Battlefield Four for that game. Like, and, and it's like a reduced. It looks more like Battle. Like Battlefield Three, that's what it looks like. The graphics looks like Battlefield Three, with the like different like mechanics and stuff, like different game missions and it's cops and robbers type thing. Like to me, that's just funny that it looks like Battlefield Three graphics, and that one actually runs better than it, Battlefield Four still doesn't run. Like, yeah, I think that I think that they what they did was they got Battlefield Three and they got Counter Strike and they're like, we can make a game out of this. Because you guys, you guys, the Counter Strike, it's like it's just like cops yeah. and uh, terrorists. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the world of Battlefield 4, though, like their maps. Exactly. Like, <laughs> let's just place it in these maps where you already created. Like, yeah. And then let's charge them $60. Yeah. And they'll never question us. And <laughs> I've heard that the, the matchmaking works better than Battlefield. I haven't played I haven't played Hardline. But I've heard that the matchmaking works better, that the party system works better, and all these things still aren't fixed with Battlefield 4. I mean, that's like saying uh, matchmaking for Wii U works better, too. I mean, anything works better in Battlefield 4 right now. So. That's a good point. It's a low bar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a two-inch hurdle. I'm the world's best two-inch hurdle. -er. <laughs> they got to like that. They hamster in the wheel, like matchmaking. Like, oh, it's going go pretty fast. Like. This is way better. <laughs> the only issue I had with Hardline is that, to me, it seemed too similar to Battlefield uh, 4. I mean... I just felt like I was playing, like like Brian Rabbit said, I felt like I was playing DLC for Battlefield 4. It just, That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, the evolution of it. Of course they changed uh, the paradigm. It's, you know, it's not a war setting, but it really could be because it's not really cops and robbers. It's a massive scale, 
war zone with people who are criminals versus a shitload of police. It's a huge playing field. It's gigantic. You know, you could get your car and drive across the map. You feel like you're in Grand Theft Auto. The and, um, local mechanics suck, though, by the way. We'll continue. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they do. But I just felt like it was, you know, a cash cow, just a grab, money grab for something that we've already played that they changed some slight mechanics on. I mean, and, and the graphics, yeah, they look like crap. I, I mean, of course, I know this is not the finished product. Mm -hmm. But to me, it just felt so similar to the, the, the previous Battlefield Four game, and I was like, yeah, you know, this is I won't be buying it. It's just no way. There's no way I'll buy that. Well, let me ask you this: This game comes out, right? Imagine this game comes out, and there's something like really broken about it. Who are you mm -hmm. gonna be mad at? You gonna be mad at EA for releasing another broken product? You'd be mad at yourself for you know trusting EA to actually give you a good product. Hey, I'll say it like George Bush: You fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, can't get fooled again. So uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well, if he fooled you the second time, it's still shame on him, right? Or no? <laughs> I was just who ran around to that fucking senator who screamed. <laughs> yeah, uh, if if you fall for it again and you get got, you can't blame them at all. You can't blame EA at all. If if you go and spend your sixty bucks and you know that they have a history of doing this shit. I'll wait. They have a long history of it now. Yeah, Since I'm saying. City was completely broken. Battlefield yeah. 4 is completely broken. Yeah. What else? Come on. I know you guys can help me out here. What else has been just trash online? What else did EA make? You made the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, some city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same yeah. yeah. What? Like crappy games that I made? No, like the games. No. <laughs> recently, it seems like they've been on. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of those. But like, recently, it feels like they've been on this streak of games that have had huge multiplayer components that just hasn't worked. Like, the system cannot handle. FIFA. EA is not capable of building this FIFA. In infrastructure. Like, right away, FIFA sucks. A lot of people said it's, like, worse FIFA. Like, matchmaking, everything just sucks, FIFA. They only even have, like, certain mechanics in the game itself that doesn't even make mm. sense. Like, it that right away... Um, the sports games, like, Madden sucked. Like, I, mean, I could go on. But all the sports games for them, like, they just lost their edge. I don't know what's going on. I wait yeah, for so basically, if someone buys this game and they get fucked, they deserve it. They, they bent over, grabbed their ankles, and said, let's go. Because uh, you should know by now. If, if you really are interested in getting hard lines, the game looks like it's interesting to you, which it may be fun for some. For me, it just feels like more of the same. Let it come out. Wait for a week. Wait for two weeks. You know, hear the consensus of, of, the, of the, the consumer. If the online works, the game is smooth, then make your purchase. But if you just fill EA's pockets with your hard-earned money and get another steamy bag of dog shit on your front porch, then it's all on you. I got to agree with you there. I mean, at some point, as consumers, we have to take, we have to take these companies. We have to give them accountability. We have to take yeah, them the yeah. if they keep. If they keep trying to shove crap at us, then we got to say no, no more crap. I'm not eating this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not gonna buy. I'm not gonna buy the sequel to a game that you lied to me about, and I'm not gonna buy the sequel to a game that you still haven't fixed. Like you, you sold me Battlefield Four, and it still doesn't work eight months later. Watch Dogs Two. You, you told me it was gonna be one thing, and it's not. And you did it on purpose. <laughs> like why? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You gotta say no. You know, I'm not doing this. I'm not buying your product because you do not treat me. You don't treat me right. You don't love me the way I want to be loved. And that's how you gotta be. Don't make me feel good about me. Is this about Battlefield? Battlefield Four makes me hurt inside. <laughs> well, I think that. I think that they should have maybe. If you had Battlefield 4, they should have maybe given you that game for $30 digital download. They would make way more money than they would just selling it for 60 or 70 like they're doing in Canada. Like, Canada why would they do that? got it going on, man. I love Canada. Go ahead. I agree with you, Marco. I think that's a great idea. If they, if they said, here, if you have Battlefield 4, we're going to give you a discount on Battlefield Hardline. Just a goodwill act uh, from EA. Yeah, that sorry, is game is... Now, I know Notch 30 is going to get pissed at me for saying this, because we had this conversation about DLC for uh, mm -hmm. Call of Duty earlier in the yep. year. But if EA said, look, if you bought Battlefield 4, we understand your experience has been bad, and here's our, our good faith gesture, right? 
We'll give you Battlefield Hardline for thirty dollars, maybe a mail-in rebate. So everybody knows mail-in rebates. You get you know probably twenty percent of the people who actually take that tag actually send it in, right? But it would be enough of a good faith gesture that would say, hey, well now I'll check out Battlefield Hardline. EA has admitted their mistake and they're trying to make it right. And if they did that, I agree with you, Marco. I think I would get into it. But what they're pulling now is baloney, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ever. I don't know if I'll ever buy a Battlefield game again. The thing That's is, uh, I'll buy one, but I, I feel like I don't want to buy one right now. <laughs> it sucks because it's not Dice's fault. This is clearly on a publisher. The, the game was already, and the publisher did not want to release it late because of their, their shareholders, and that's what they're worried about, the money, because it's, you know if you say you're going to delay this game when it's a big-budget game, the, the people that have stock for it are going to flip. The shareholders control EA, and that's the thing with EA always suck. They're, they're held hostage to their shareholders. And because of that, DICE takes all the punishment. And the thing is, with a, if, that's the reason why they can't give things for free, because these developers still need to get paid. They are working overtime and stuff like that because they're trying to fix a game that was never ready to be released. And while they're doing that, they're also being forced to do another game that's still not ready, that's in beta mm-hmm. right now. And I know they have a huge team, but at the same time, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of pressure, and that's a lot of things on the same server. So I don't know if people realize this. What's going to happen when that game is released, when Battlefield already has a lot of people on the server, and that game has a lot of people on the server, then what's going to happen? Crash, crash, crash. crash. Because the they're, they're, it's, it's only beta right now, and it's crashing <laughs> sometimes now. Wait until it happens. You should see how often that crashes on the PC version. The PC version, it's glitched out like crazy for the beta. The PC version, you can't even record. You can't use, you can't stream. I saw Angry Joe, like, you cannot stream using uh, Twitch. Or, uh, what's it called? The, OBS? No, not OBS, the only one you can use. Fraps. Okay. Yeah, Fraps. you can't use now frap. So what's the other one called? The splitter. Uh, X split. Yeah, you can't use X split. It crashes automatically. So they had to. OBS is the only one you can use, and it still lags like crazy because of OBS. And that's it. Like that's the only thing that works. So there's so many bugs in the game already for PC version. It just looks like it reminds you of Battlefield 4. That's how bad it is right now. Like it reminded me of Battlefield 4 just came out, and that's what it looks like for the PC mm. version. Which is weird. So I don't know. Damn. Looks like we're going to get more of the same, guys. Put your yeah. wallet back in your pocket. That's bad news. That's bad news. I haven't heard the same thing about... You guys been playing the PlayStation 4 version of the beta? I, I uh, played it at E3. I played it. <laughs> I played it just, just, just for a moment to get a feel for it. You know, I got a couple games in, and I just didn't like it. You didn't try any of the mass breaking or anything like that, right? No. That's always where I have a problem. When I play by myself on Battlefield 4... It's generally not too bad an experience. Sometimes I still get a bug that you know wrecks it, but normally it's not that bad an experience. It's when I try and play with other people. When I p- try and play with nine to five gamers yesterday, or when we were trying to play as a group, like it just, it's been a bad experience for me. And it, it, it was it was a bad ex- into it. It was it was a bad experience for me because that wasn't the the uh, beta or alpha I wanted. I wanted Destiny. And I ended up getting Hardline. Damn it. Yeah, that was a poor choice, my friend. <laughs> no, I, 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 applied, I applied for them both, but they only gave me one. Oh, really? You applied for Destiny? I thought they gave that to everybody. No, they, they didn't give it to everybody. They, they had a certain amount that they gave out. Oh, really? They're tweeting out codes on uh, Twitter. Yeah, we, we yeah. went to their web, we went to their website, and their website said that they were they were exhausted, oh. and so I was a little late to that party. Uh, yeah. Any of you guys excited about the, I know it's off subject? The infamous DLC coming out. What's it called? The First Light. I'm excited because I was able to get rid of Infamous. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice that you didn't have to keep the disc. That is cool. Yeah. I like that. That game, I don't know why I'm thinking about this right now. I know we're running late, but I, I can talk all night. That's how I feel. Um, <laughs> this this game is such a, a great idea, and it's implemented so well, but the world feels so dead. I feel like if they just made a DLC that added side quests in the world and people actually you know, doing things in the world and the interactivity with just non-player characters, that it could breathe some life into that game. It's just so little that you can actually do in it once you, uh, you know, go and take out the, the DUP and do your little quests and find people and find cameras, then they're, you're really re- just restricted to just running around and, and jumping and flying. I feel like if they created a DLC that maybe a real, a, a, maybe something called the Life DLC or something to make that game feel more alive... A zombie evasion, like Red Dead 
Hell yeah! What was that right there? What was the yeah. DLC for Undead that? Undead Nightmare. Undead I Nightmare. I think this is a start, like by just giving you a new character with new uh, new powers. Like it's you already had those powers, but you didn't have the full powers because she has the full powers. So you got but, a new plans fetch. So it's a new story and new character. So. But the thing is, uh, not too nerdy. How can you get this game without having the actual disc? The, because if you get it without having a disc, does that mean you download the size of the entire world? Because the DLC, yeah. I'm, I'm sure, really, you download the entire game? Yeah. I'm more like, just, this, is not, this is not the first time they did this. They do this all the time. They always do the, the disc. They, you'll need a disc. A lot of it's like the DLC. Like, the DLC is not even related. They do that a lot. So basically, like, you can download Infamous the whole game if you want. You can buy it yeah. online. Yeah, like, Sucker Punch does that. Like, they do that a lot for you. So, wow, I had, I had no idea. They wow. like doing that, which makes sense because then you don't have to have the disc. You know what I mean? They feel that they're at that point where if you didn't buy it already, then you might not buy it, but they, they give you incentives for buying it. If you buy it, you get, like, extra content in the in the next DLC game. But if you don't, you still have the option to play it. So then so, getting so, $20 from someone is better than... Getting you know not getting anything from them so that's so the way to so go. someone like someone like me versus you who still has the game if I, when I get I am gonna get when I get this oh, deal I still got it downloaded my PS4 though oh okay it's gonna, a person it's who still has that. a person what? who still has that download or that disc they're gonna get additional content yeah over over the just play DLC just you're gonna have like an have extra it. content I don't know what it's gonna be I don't know if it's gonna be like clothing. Who knows what it's going to be. You're going to get more content, though. I know that for sure. They already announced that. So you get more stuff because you had the game compared to someone who did it. So, right, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, uh-huh. hopefully hopefully, there's more trophies. But uh-huh. I, I doubt it. I already got platinum, so I don't think that you could do anything else. You platinum that game? That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's All already right, tro- troubling enough. Just <laughs> on normal. The game is hardcore, man. If you guys have already... Had... Oh, go ahead. Quit being so passive, man. Say what's on your mind, bro. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I, I was just going to change the subject real quick so you can finish off what you were going to say. No, I was just saying that everybody in my household besides Nova and Nina beat that game. My 12-year-old beat it, 13-year-old beat it, Kate beat it, and I beat it. So we got plenty of playtime out of it. Um, continue, Mr. Unreal Gamer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, if you guys haven't already, the crew closed beta sign up. You guys can do it right now. It's for PC only, and you need a Uplay account. It's going to come in. Uh, uh, are you guys going to get that game? Because I'm not. I'm not too nerdy, like... out. <laughs> Uplay. <laughs> it, it looks okay. It's just not my type of game. The game takes forever. I'll tell you this right now. It's pretty cool. It's like, it takes forever, though. Like, why am I going to race you to California? From like, two, hour, two hour races, right? It's like it's just I don't know. It just like it just seems too long for like missions. Like a mission might be like two hours long or something like that. Like it's uh, seriously like you have to take a restroom break. I, I don't know, man. It, to me, it's like it's cool though. It's like an MMO for cars. Like that's never been done before. So or at least I don't think it's been done before. It's pretty cool. You know, I mean, I, I, you sort of get that. I don't know. I sort of get that need for speed underground. Like the, I don't know if you guys ever played that Need for Speed yeah, Underground, like, yeah, like yeah. that, like you like you could like like uh, beep your horn, be like, oh, let's race something like that. I feel like it's like that. Like there's people around the world that you could just interact with alongside. That's what it feels like. But this is just in a huge map, you know what I mean? So to me, I I got a chance to play it, and it's cool. Like it, the graphics looks good and all that stuff. But for me, it's just like I don't know. I'm not really a huge racing fan anymore. I, I do occasionally, but. Like, it, is how realistic is it? Like, if you get out of the car and you walk the race, will you lose weight? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? For, like, walking <laughs> your character? Your character. <laughs> no, it's just not like, for drive through food? I, I, didn't see, I didn't see anyone get out of the car. All I saw was, like, in cars. That's all they let us test it. I didn't even know you could get out of the car. <laughs> I'm, just wondering, I'm just messing with you now, too. <laughs> What's that one game? Was it Need for Speed, The Run, or something? Was it? Yeah. The road, no, where yeah. you can actually run with the character, that's just, that was weird. Well, well, those are actually, just like, I, I, if you can, I didn't know you can. I was playing that game, I got it. I was playing it last week and the week before. I, and when he gets out of the car, it's actually pre-scripted. So, oh, you know, I was like, can, I thought, I'm like, what is Need for Speed doing right now? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not bad. It looks really good. It's exciting. But, like, the moment you're out of the car, you're chasing people or getting chased. And 
you know, it's pretty scripted stuff. To be honest with you, they cancel each other out. You got the crew coming out, you got Drive Club, and you got Forza Horizon. Forza, sorry, you got to say with a T in there, even though there's no T. What? Forza Why? Horizon 2 is coming out. They're all coming around at the same time, which is, they cancel each other out. So whatever console you have, you have a racing sim, so it really doesn't make a difference. So how much money is this fall going to cost me? I know I'm getting Destiny. When's GTA 5 coming out? GTA 5. That game looks great. What, game looks the, great. Do we know the awesome. date for that, or have they not said yet? Hmm. That's a good question. You should uh, definitely look that one up. Man, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that game looks phenomenal, man. When I saw GTA 5, I swear I didn't know what it was until I saw like the main characters. I was like, "What is this?" They really went in there and did, you know, a lot of work to make that game look vastly improved over the previous generation. I just hope that they can do something similar to that with The Last of Us. Oh man, because GTA Five does look like a PS4, you know, slash Xbox One experience now. Um, it looks fucking phenomenal. And if they can do the same thing with The Last of Us, I'll never play GTA Five. <laughs> It's I funny, though. I'm like, hmm, that's a good idea to have you found that release date yet, anyway. No, I haven't. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I'm going to find it. <laughs> I'm going to make it up. It's going to be November 15th. <laughs> okay, so it's cool. going to release right alongside Call of Duty. I think that's going to be the big weekend of the year because, obviously, Call of Duty fans and GTA fans, they're the two biggest games on YouTube, right? So they're going to really fight it out. And uh, I think that in a Royal Rumble scenario, if we got all of Rockstar together and all of Sledgehammer together, well, Rockstar, you know, if you look at the name of the company, they're going to be more prima donna. Sledgehammer, look at the name of that company. They're all about a hammer. Uh, so I think that in a Royal Rumble situation, that Sledgehammer is going to come out on top here. <laughs> so that's my analysis of this situation. <laughs> well, <laughs> Who's got the better uniforms? <laughs> with, with that said, there's one game that <laughs> I'm excited for, and I saw the, the you know the gameplay of it and everything, which looks pretty damn cool. Which is uh, the Batman game, Arkham yeah. Knight. That looks sick. Yeah. You know, you can finally ride a Batmobile the real way, not like the NES way. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it, it, it hovers, or no, it like goes side to side. It, or it's something. Like, yeah. it, it, it strays. It's strays with it. That's weird. Like, it's uh, it looks pretty cool. And uh, <laughs> now there's been a leak date or whatever that uh, Xbox One accidentally announced or Microsoft announced and they said that according to Cinema Blend like yeah yeah Cinema Blend is uh, the one to announce this they, they showed a screenshot of it and it said Bat Batman Arkham Knight for Xbox One is uh, release date is 2-24-2015 so in case you guys didn't know that's February <laughs> I was hoping you to tell me what damn month it was Last year when Call of Duty Ghosts came out, uh, Microsoft did the same thing. They they put up on their uh, web page, like the Microsoft Xbox web page, a screenshot of the game's cover, and under it it had a date, like mm -hmm. a release date, but it ended up being the wrong date. So this could it, be wrong. It might, but the thing is, though, this, is like, this isn't like a placeholder date. Like, usually placeholders are not placeholder on a Zach Tuesday. Yeah. And, like, if you look at a date, that's... The last Tuesday of in, in February, I, I highly doubt that that's a placeholder. Are you guys I, looking forward to this game? I, I'm not. I'm I not. am. I yeah. think this, they're going to be. Did it's going to be amazing because the last game, of the is supposedly this is done. Like, and it's literally yeah. done for the studio. They're done. This yeah. is the last of the game, and I and it's back in the hands of the regular studio, not Rocksteady. Yeah. yeah. So how like, could you not be excited about that? How could you not be, Briar Rabbit? This the original two. Did you get your hands on this one at E3? Yeah, I got a chance to look at it. I didn't get a chance to play it. Like, they're, they're showing a like, live demo. It looks the thing that got me like, unexcited is the Batmobile. I just, I, I don't like I, that puzzle element between the Batmobile and on foot. I think it's better because the one the one problem I had with, like, the the regular, the Batman, like, Arkham Asylum, Arkham, uh, Arkham uh, City. City is City. the fact that you're flying all over locations, you're gliding. Most of the games you glide in. That's annoying. At least now they give you an opportunity to drive to location, location, or do certain things. Like that's half the fun. And I'm sure there's gonna be villains and other things in the city when you're driving. You know what I mean? So there'll be other things that'll be in your way. 
And I think to me, like, that's something that's improvement because all you literally did, like, to go from one location, and it's usually a far distance because the maps are huge in there, and mm -hmm. you're in a, such a far distance and you're flying, like, to me, you're not flying, you're gliding. And then you get to rooftop and then you glide to another section. That, that's kind of boring sometimes. Sometimes you lose focus, you're just gliding most of the time until you get to the next mission. At least now, like, you could drive around, do certain things, which makes it cool because you're driving yeah. the Batmobile. I mean, you know think, I mean? Think, think, think about how awesome it is. You guys remember Batman Returns when Michael Keaton was Batman and that feeling of hitting the button and the Batmobile just driving up on him. You can do that shit now. And on top yeah. of that, you can drive through the city and, like, use your car as a projectile to shoot yourself out. Too gliding to the sky. I mean, that thing looks awesome. I mean, I I, I agree 100% with you, Nazi Nerdy. To be able to fly and glide around the city, and then on top of that, use your car as like this this tank. It's like a tank, and you can drive through, you know, the concrete bricks and and, and mortar on the walls and stuff. It's awesome. I think it's yeah, because be sick. now it's really emphasizing open world once again. Like this yeah. is true open world. Cause now you could drive like before. You're wondering like why would he just keep gliding there? You know how long does it take him to glide? It's not like he can literally fly. You know what I mean? So he has to glide from one building to another, and it takes forever to do that. Why not have a vehicle? Why not have something? Now it makes sense. He has a vehicle. You can get into the vehicle, and it's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's pretty sweet to see that. You know what I mean? It gives people more options in the game, and I yeah. think that. Like that's a huge thing in the game because you don't want someone to lose interest. Like just it's gonna feel repetitive that all you do is do a mission and glide to the next mission and do a mission and glide. Now you can do different things. You could glide to the next mission, you could go on the streets. I'm sure there's be other things. There might be someone who needs save and there's other things that might happen now. Who knows like what's going on? If the world, but from what I saw, the world still looks kinda empty down low. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. So they didn't really show too much, so who knows what they're gonna do. You can do you create think Batman like, ever loses his keys. I mean, he doesn't need he doesn't need keys. <laughs> he does, he yeah, you lose my toothpick, man. <laughs> See, Batman has like this eye scanner thing where he goes to the car and it, it just it tracks his eyes and it opens automatically. It's a medium car. Medium yes. <laughs> the thing is, uh, you can create that that velocity you need now. Like, say for instance, you need to get to a high perch and you just out in the middle of nowhere, rather than jumping onto the side of a building, uncharted style, and shimmying up, you can call your car, drive around the block, and then once you're aiming towards where you need to go, shoot out of the car and just fly up. It's fucking sick. Yeah. So many different options, man. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. I like the idea. It makes it like a whole new game, adds a whole new element to the game, and that's always good. I mean, they were already good before, so like adding new element to the game is always a good thing. I don't see how that'll ever be a bad thing. So I think that. That's that's good. Hopefully it ends well. I mean, Scarecrow is a good villain as well. The reason why yeah. is because it could be anything that's attacking you. It's your fear. It's your yeah. fears that are causing <laughs> damage. So yeah. they can literally, it's it, it's no limit to what they can show you because you don't know what's real, or what's not. So that I love stuff like that because you you could picture they could throw anything at you. They could put a dinosaur if they want to. Like if that's your fear, I don't know what Batman's scared yeah, of. All those old eternal darkness tricks. Yeah, maybe he's afraid of Barney. I don't know. Maybe Barney's so <laughs> long. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that sounds exactly like him. That's kind of scary. <laughs> that was pretty spot on. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you see Barney. You see the purple lettering. Well, yeah. now we know what happens if he loses. Hit the tournament, he might have to be wearing a Barney suit in a video. <laughs> hmm. Don't think too hard on that, not too many. Waste your energy. Like, like, what day is it today? He's like Barney's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Man, for a uh, slow news week, we sure had a lot to say. Yeah. Hell right? yeah, man! This is awesome. <laughs> Nothing happened this week, but we had the longest show of all time. Yeah, right? <laughs> Damn, that's called having fun, guys. Should we wrap it up, or uh, you guys got more topics you want to go over? Uh, I'm, I'm good. All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, not too nerdy, what are you up to this week? That's a good question. I'm asking myself that right now as we speak. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> But uh, what I'm going to do next week, obviously, I'm going to do another garage slash yard sale video game pickup, so definitely check that out. I, it was a slow week this weekend, but I still managed to salvage some uh, pickups. How's that uh, series doing? Is it getting any views? Because I find it fascinating. Yeah, I, actually, I really like it. It's actually getting a pretty good amount of views, good. especially since like I comment on people that I watch and their pickups. Yeah. Like 
their people are watching me now. It seemed like I, I got a lot more subscribers from them and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I love the series. You know, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I was able to go to the flea market as well at some garage sale pickups. Not great ones, but, you know, I was able to get certain things. But, uh, yeah, I'm also going to – I might pick up – I was supposed to pick up the UFC game last week. I don't know if I'm going to get the UFC game or if I'm going to get the Transformers game. I might get one of the two this week because that new Transformers game comes out this week. Check out, check out so, the reviews of that UFC before you buy it, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. EA took it over, so that's the reason why I was kind of scared. You know, Check out but those reviews before you... Before you when are we uh, going to start using EA to mean shitty? <laughs> um, Damn, that's so EA. But like, extra, <laughs> extra ass. Extra ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> We're in a whole... Wait, that's a, that's a uh, late night conversation. We're only at 8.30 p.m. Hey, uh, I, I, mean, I mean it in the worst <laughs> possible derogatory way. I know black guy and extra ass could mean a good thing for me, but <laughs> that's like that Skinamax stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, besides the Transformers game, that's pretty much it. I'll, I'm also going to review Ultra Street Fighter 4, which is sort of like a game review. I'm also going to talk about the fights. We're going to start like, doing some series maybe once every two weeks or something like that, talk about okay. the show. I want to start talking about TV shows and movies more often now. Do you still I have the like, game? You can do gameplay of yeah, the game yeah. while you're talking actually, about the show. I'm actually in the process of getting it back because I got rid of that game a while ago for the Xbox 360 game. It's 360? Yeah, but I heard now it's free to download. It's free to play, so if that's the case, I have to check that. If it's free to play, I'm just going to re-download it for the Xbox I'll 360. I'll download that too, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's free to play because I know the PC is free to play, and I heard there's rumor that it's free to play for all because I beat it completely. I beat every side mission, everything. But then it, it, they give you a new mission every week before the show, and it relates into the show. It ties into yeah, the that's right. I forgot about that. Are they doing that for season two? Yeah, they started it already. So oh, they, that's cool. Yeah, so, I mean, it has a lot more people playing on PC now than the consoles because I guess a lot of people don't play the, the last-gen versions as much. But a lot I'm more playing on Mac. Like, they got Mac. Uh, I don't think so. Um, nope. I don't know no, if Mac. Mac exists in the gaming world, but um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe soon. No, but <laughs> hey, I got one metal. question for you. I, what I'd like to see is I'd like you to see, like do put your because I know you have your list of games like in a spreadsheet. I'd yeah. like you to see you put those online like in a Google Hangout or something so everybody can kind of track your progress. As it relates to your, I, I have uh, them already. It's on Google Spreadsheets already. I just got we'll put share. a link to your video so everybody can see it. Yeah, sounds good. So they That'd can see cool. my progress. I want to show oh. the progress. I should do that. I'll do that not, first then. Yeah. Not, not too nerdy. Uh, you said it's already on Google Spreadsheets. Yes. Is your address on there too? What do you mean? Is your home address on that spreadsheet? Yeah. So I don't so think I can, so. so I can oh. <laughs> Go collect okay. your own games over there. Oh. <laughs> hey, welcome to BC Gamer Channel. I want to show you my new pickups. <laughs> I, I, I had a really a good week. Truck. I got, oh my goodness. You guys got to see what I got. Yeah, I'm Rico Gamer, what are you up to this week? <laughs> well, I'm going to be playing some Team Fortress 2 to finish off my... Uh, Beautiful gaming sessions I'm having, but uh, it's also a great, great time to be Canadian because Target's having these 50% off uh, game sale. So I'm getting so many new games. I got my uh, Wii U for only 150 for the deluxe set, and what? Uh, there was game. I know it blew my mind. They were like trying to get rid of them, so I got one of those. I got like Mar uh, Super, what is it? Super Mario Brothers U for only like 21 dollars. I got Wind Waker. It is fun, uh, and then I got Wind Waker. And I, for free, it's a, it's a good time. See, you know, if you buy Mario Kart 8, you get another game with it, too. Yeah, that's like why, two yeah. Two games for one, yeah. You know what sucks, Marco? I would have uh, got you to get me something, but by, if you ship it to me, it's going to cost a fortune for shipping. So I'm like, there goes the money I saved. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I'm going to look forward to the Steam sales because they're just blowing my mind. I mean, they had Borderlands 2 for 5 bucks, Outlast for 5 bucks, Don't Starve for 375 it just it blows my mind that Steam could even afford. Like, of course they can afford to, but they even put these sales out there because yeah. I don't see Xbox or PlayStation even putting near the sale prices that these guys are doing. Ooh, they gave away Borderlands <laughs> two for free on PS3. Robbie yeah, isn't here, so since Robbie's not here, don't you talk about PlayStation? Don't you even go to them? Okay? <laughs> Don't don't even do it, sir. Because Sony gives away free stuff all the time. Don't even go there. Marco, <laughs> did you get any free games for uh, voting? Cause you get like you get the cards and trading cards. You could use it to trade for money. 
and then you yeah. can actually use it too. That's why I did. I've been voting the whole time. I only bought two games, but like, I've been voting so like every single time you could vote, so I could get free like cards, the trading cards, they trade in for money, so I could use to buy free games. Like. <laughs> Yeah, and another, and another thing they're doing is like something in uh, something the adventure, and uh, you can join a team. And when you join a team, uh, you have to collect these cards by either voting or paying by paying ten dollars in the Steam store. And once you get so many cards, you can build like these. Uh, uh, what the heck are they called? I don't know. It's like a. You build something, and then if you get that, you get 10 points for your team, and the, like the team goes to like 375,000 points. And if you're on that team. And you win that day, you get uh, 30 people from that team get three of their wish list games for free. So oh, that's just, awesome. And so far, my team is winning tonight. So I, I just went ahead and like did the new Call of Duty Evolve and uh, what other one did I put on? I don't know. I put all the new games. Hopefully, I get them. <laughs> but uh, maybe. I'm looking at the, their page right now. They got Tomb Raider on here for five bucks right now too. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I, uh, I'd advise to everybody buy the flash sales because those daily deals will go cheaper in the flash sales. So. Yeah. Well, I I do like the ones that are the big deals for the daily deals are the ones you could do. Flash sales are the best without a doubt. Flash sale is the one that's never going to get cheaper than that. But the daily deal also, and just keep in mind if you miss the sale, the last day it does all the sales again. So everything that you miss, it'll do every at the lowest price that it was at, it'll do it again one last time. So like they got Skyrim for like three bucks on there. Yeah, they got a lot of things like you do. So they even have Dead Rising at pre-order, and it's only like thirty-five bucks. It's crazy. Wow. Wow. All right, Beastly Gamer, what are you up to this week besides playing with Google Effects? <laughs> How do you know what I'm doing? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> fun. Okay, uh, this week, um, uh, Kate and I are going to do some Beauty and the Beast this week. And talk about her surgery. She went and had surgery. Friday, I want to say Friday. Yeah, she went and had surgery Friday. We watched Total Recall. She wanted okay? to get. That. Yeah, uh, we watched Total Recall. She wanted to go get that third tit put in, and so uh, she. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, no, she had a kidney stone <laughs> <laughs> removed, uh, <laughs> uh, and so uh, yeah, I was there. I took a, I took a day off to be with my wife and enjoy that day. Uh, seven hours in the hospital, and uh, I'm gonna be uh. You know, getting my, my level up in some. Uh, can you guys guess the game? Uh, maybe uh, some. Call of Duty. Uh, hell, hell no. What's that? I'm playing uh, The Last of Us, online for PS3. I'm gonna continue to play that until it comes out for the PS4. I'm sorry, guys. I feel compelled to play something else, but I just don't feel like it would be as fun. I, I'm s such a loser. I never thought I'd be sucked in by this game the way I am because I. The, the single player campaign is so phenomenal. I didn't think that the multiplayer would turn me into such a bitch. But it <laughs> uh, I swear, I, I, it just it frustrates me that I, I'm being like this because I normally try to jump around and play different games all the time. And I, I always got on my youngest son about it. He was on Borderlands 2 for like a year straight. Every time I saw him, he was, I said, Brandon, there are more games to play than this game. He looked at me and said, but, Dad, it's so fun. Now I understand, son, because I'm just like you. When it comes to The Last of Us Only, <laughs> it's a good experience, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's looking me up? You did it. You that shit. <laughs> Man, you do that the whole time. <laughs> God damn it. Dude, this is the best app ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not too nerdy, you bastard. That's right on. Too much. Don't move. Don't move. You'll see. That is perfect. <laughs> Dude, that's like that's like Doctor Robotnik style, right there. You know, <laughs> do the hair, damn it! I'll get you, Sonic. Damn it! That's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we should wrap it up. <laughs> I think we ended on a good note. Before Brett starts drawing on our faces, we're gonna end this show. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. Bye. <laughs>